This is Russ Dizdar, Shatter the Darkness.net on the web. We've got a series this week that, uh, listen, some are going to say, I don't even want to listen to it. I've heard this over the years. There are those that uh, want to deny the existence of such radical evil as this. There are those that just don't want to hear about the devil. They don't want to hear about what's going on really around them. And uh, let me say right now to sound the alarm that that is vital that we understand that even the body of Christ has uh, closed their eyes in an unbiblical way to the uh, presence of, the growth, the agenda, uh, the reality of uh, satanic presence and powers, and how they get here, and how they um, are summoned and brought across. The number one way, as always in ancient days to this day, human sacrifice. So we're going to get into the blood and guts of satanic rituals, In the United States of America, when I brought out the um, seminar teaching on 500 million, 500 million satanic rituals in the USA and also in the countries, Russia, Europe, England, Canada, Australia, across the board. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a reason for the chaos, reason for the economic declines, reason for the environmental um, collapses and uh, calamity. There's a reason for the political unrest. There's a reason for the violence. There's a reason for that dark presence in the air, the ominous thing that says all hell is about to break loose. Now, this is an older report, and let me just say right now, because it's absolutely, um, well, listen, shocking, it is uh, gripping. Let me read the title, and it's by Scorchafal, as reported to her Russian subscribers. Now, I'm going to look into the authenticity, I'm going to look into more of this. I've listened to the reports, but here's the title, Mysterious Ritual, Performed by United States Military Forces in Babylon raises concerns of Muslim and Russian Orthodox religious leaders. Now listen to what it says. Russian intelligence analysts are reporting today on a bizarre religious ritual being uh, performed by elements of the United States military, including some of their top leaders in the closed military zone of the ancient city of Babylon in Iraq. Seen by Russian satellite photos taken over the area around Babylon, these reports state that the Americans have constructed a nearly one-kilometer circle around the massive excavation of a Babylon, listen, a Babylonian feathered serpent in an apparent ritual relating to the ancient objects they are about to unearth and have stationed, listen, giant U.S. military cargo aircraft to bring to the United States, and which they have apparently been waiting to do on the specific date of April 16th. And let me just say right now that as I'm looking into this, I'm going to study a little bit more behind the scenes. It's not um, beyond the dark side to uh, seek U.S. military, to seek Military systems, whether Russian, whether military, anywhere in the world, the old Nazis, and lead them to believe that powers can be obtained, that uh, there can be a weaponization of these dark forces, that they can be harnessed and used in a military capacity. That's exactly what military uh, applied satanic ritual release demonstrated in Revelation 16, is all about. That's what the ancient uh, sacrifice of a military king's son on the city wall so that powers would come down on the soldiers so they could defeat Israel. That's in Second Kings chapter 3. Those in the United States, those in Canada, but specifically the United States right now, you have no idea of the amount of satanic rituals done in the hidden places, double basements, caverns, secret places. It is the number one way to bring the powers, well, on that side of the veil, on over to this side. On the front page, shatterthedarkness.net, here's what it says. Quote, satanic rituals may be going on in your backyard. Really? 
These rituals are old and being done in numbers off the scales. What is the main goal? to summon the dark powers and bring them to this side. How they summon is of massive importance, human sacrifice. Why do they do it? Well, these bloody rituals are done uh, for themselves, for their use. Uh, But the greater issue is why the dark side is seeking to cross over at all. The dark powers have and will come to our side in an all, and listen, off the scale numbers. They really do affect lives, families, cities, nations. Uh, They are and will be sought for the personal. Listen, personal, military, and destructive capacities. Why so many rituals? Will they help open the doors for the coming dark chaos? Will politicians be influenced and even seek their dark promises? And why is there so much denial, refusal to know about this underground lethal river? What about satanic ritual warfare, demons being sent against the church? Is the church alert, aware, armed, and can it move into powerful action? Well, listen, that's what we're going to talk about this week. Ancient rituals and dark powers. We're going to look at uh, some of the past and uh, the reasons for them. We're not talking about something obscure that's never been there, that it's, you know, finding a little fragment here, a little fragment there. This is off the scales when you study the past, let alone what's now. And for all those who are biblically literate, Those who have studied uh, the prophecies that show that massive, unprecedented manifestation of demonic powers not only is uh, here right now, but will become off the scale as never before in human history. And, my dear friends, the demonstrative effect, the manifested effect with counterfeit signs, wonders, miracles, the secret power of lawlessness, spirits that masquerade as angels of light, and that literally deceive, as Jesus said, would deceive many. There is a goal, there is a plot, and listen, that's part of the work that we do. That might be the reason you're listening. If by the providence of God you've uh, come in then may the hand of God uh, bring insight and help. May the compassion of the living Christ embrace you. I pray unashamedly for your salvation, that God would touch your life. Whether Satanist, Luciferian, elitist, down, deep, hidden in the uh, underground places, there in uh, Roma, in Palatine, in... uh, in and throughout all of that ancient belly of the beast, and what about the um, and what about the uh, the nations of Iraq and Kuwait and Iran and where the old Persian Empire, the prince of, of the power, listen, this this Persian prince in the in the territorial sense. What about the place where the Nephilim roamed, where watchers Benai Elohim uh, came down? And uh, grab the women. Where the Nephilim and the second generation and on and on. Where the ancient tribes, the Moabites and all the rest. Where they conjured the spirits. Uh, the place where Satan fell. That, that, that ground that has been uh, polluted and grabbed. The artifacts, the old temples, the demonized objects. The spirits that are waiting and summoning and calling and working. For mere mortals to come near, to hear, and to once again open gateways, that should never, ever be opened. You've got to understand how the dark side works. They're going to open up every ancient gateway. They're going to look for every single door, whether be it the Mayans, be it other excavation places around the world, the ancient temples. Listen, it's all coming down, backbred Nephilim, direct Nephilim, uh, the uh, presence. Now, when I say all of this, I say it on the basis of our research, of our engagement, of the current uh, scene that we see, but also on the basis of the um, urgent biblical 
prophetic revelation in the future as God begins to unleash wrath. This is after the chaos, after the Antichrist. After all of that, God uh, suspends the release of the wrath of God on the beast kingdom. The book of Revelation. And you're going to read that in the future, hundreds of millions of people will not repent, will not turn to God, because they're going to be um, they're going to be um, literally sold out to Famarkion, to magic arts and the worship of demons. We, you and I, the world around us right now, all of past history has never, will never see a day that has been predicted. It will be off the scales, off the charts, demonic presence. Listen, some people have said, you know, listen, we don't want to talk about the demons. We don't want to talk about the dark side. We don't want to talk about that. Well, you're not going to shut down the Lord Jesus Christ as he brings revelation on the dark side, are you? We're not going to shut down the Spirit of God that brings the most accurate and uh, urgently given biblical revelation and prophetic revelation concerning the last days. We're not going to sit back and just simply let all of this massive intel of God and what he brings as a warning uh, be literally um, buried, are we? You've got to understand that the days that we live in and what's happening right now, well, they have a, they have a connection to ancient Babylon, Future global Babylon, uh, the home of demons, read it, Revelation 18, the most manifested, the most infested, the most, uh, uh, listen, as far as the dark side is concerned, you can't get any more manifestation. It is the pinnacle of the power of darkness from that side to this side, and we are on the way this week. The title of the theme, Satanic Rituals in the USA, Subpoint, and in your country too. So let me say to the Europeans, let me say to the Russians, let me say to the Canadians, let me say to those in Australia, that not only have the Satanic Rituals uh, doubled, tripled, quadrupled, and uh, are they there? The secret, supernaturally laced, secret power of lawlessness. You've read it, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Let's not be blind to what God has revealed. Let's not be um, in denial of what reality is out there. Listen, skeptics and fear mongers that will not even talk about it, never, they just simply don't have the ability to help anybody. They don't have the ability to discern. They don't have the ability to bring out and tell you and bring the warning. Listen carefully. On Wednesday of this week, now listen, for all the undergrounders, you Satanists, the chosen ones, others uh, that are there listening, monitoring, reconning the show, that's fine. They will all tell you, anybody working in this field will all tell you, the rituals have already begun. The search for victims and children and others, well, that's already begun. The breeding for sacrificial victims, that's already done. Starting October 13th, you can read it on any satanic ritual calendar, but just as far as the noted ones, the 13th to the 30th, preparation for All Hallows Eve, Samhain. Abduction, holding, and ceremony pre ceremonial preparation of individuals for human sacrifice. October 28th through the 30th, high, listen, Satanist High Holy Day. As related, it is uh, the time of uh, human sacrifice each day. October 30th and 31st, now I'm quoting all of this information right off of a, uh, well, uh, satanic, uh, ritualistic uh, calendar. We come to the 30, 31st, All Hallows' Eve, Halloween night, blood and sexual rituals and so forth, animal, human sacrifice. November 1st, uh, Satanist High Holy Day, human sacrifice, all the way to November 4th. It's not over 
on All Hallows' Eve. It's not over on Halloween. And I know that the public is going to give candy. And I know that uh, New Agers will charge crystals. And I know that Wiccans and Pagans and Druids and others will do their bonfires and celebrate other things and help open the doors of that thin veil that separates their side from this side. But on November the 4th, it's listed as Satanic Revels. The use of girls between the ages of 7 and 17. Tuesday, tomorrow night, we'll deal with the Black Mass, Rituals of Destruction, Chaos and Death, Summoning the Dark Entities. Wednesday night, 6 p.m., Rituals in the U.S. And we will list some, we will bring out some law, some of the cases that we've been involved in. Can it affect national security? I want the Russians to clearly listen to what your national security uh, leader has said. We'll have some uh, a guest call in that's been involved in satanic rituals. Current stats, the statistics. It will just simply blow our minds. And we're going to go into it and we're going to touch on the series that I've done. And we're still doing and adding to Dark Rituals, Dark Powers. There's a reason for that. Listen now, it's not time to go watch Oprah. It's not time, you know, to go, you know, do something else. Believers in Christ need to understand, based on biblical revelation, biblical prophecy, and the realities of that dark side, that the reason for the manifested advances all the way to Armageddon is the summoning release of real satanic powers. Demons that carry the abilities, the powers. Listen, anyone who is biblically minded, simply go study tonight. Revelation 16. Look at the beast and look at the dragon and look at the false prophet and the release of demons and the targeting of military and political leaders. And this is the power behind the coming Armageddon. This is the power behind the development of planetary defense weapon systems. This is the power breathing down uh, the necks of warmongers and uh, those who will play the game of false flag and those who will um, unleash the fear and the need for more weapons and more weapons and more weapons. Listen to the soldiers. Listen to the soldiers coming back from the Middle East. Dark presence, dark powers, depression, oppression, suicidal tendencies. Is there any, is there, listen, is there, is there, it, should it shock us that on the very grounds of human sacrifice, Nephilim, of ancient tribes, of old Babylon, the very grounds where the territorial spirit the prince of Persia, operated. You think they've gone away? You think the demons have died? You think the spirits that wanted men and women to worship? They are waiting where they've been buried. The gateways, the doorways, the ritual objects, the artifacts. So I'm going to say a warning to all military leadership. To those ancient black flame Nazis, you know the truth. You know how it works. You spread it around the world. Listen, those that would seek by the finding of ancient ritual manuals, oh, not bound by cardboard, old leathers, but bound by human skin, whose ink has been infused with richly charged human sacrificial blood. Ancient rituals guided by spirits in detail, laying out to the ritual workers how to summon the dark gods, small g, the powers, how to appease them, how to open the doors, how to call on their names. Well, we're going to deal with that again. Now, listen, listen, this is uh, for the weak. This is for the strong. This is about asking that God bring uh, the spirit of power and grace and might and fearlessness to every single believer in Christ. It is time that uh, you 
Do not live in the shadows and do not live in the fears and do not hide. It is time for, um, listen, uh, the righteous to be as bold as a lion. It is time, listen, for leaders, Nehemiah's and Daniel's and Esther's and Deborah's, to take their stand. It is time for a David to be completely uh, incensed by a Goliath, a Nephilim spouting blasphemies against God and bringing human transmutation, demonization to lives, to families, to tribes, to entire nations. The goal in the ancient days is to transmute humanity to the degree that they don't even exist. Well, there's uh, the promise of the bloodline, of the human bloodline, because Christ, Messiah, would come in human flesh. There's got to be humans, but the agenda of the other side, do you know the tactics? Do you know the strategy? Do you know what they're really doing? So with urgency, I will come tonight, with urgency all of this week, I will bring information I will come with um, recorded audio from individuals that have called the new Shatter the Darkness alert line. That's right. Brand new Shatter the Darkness alert line. We've got it on the website. And here's what it says. I want to make it very clear. You can leave an anonymous message for us to use this month. I may bring up your info question to the live radio program. I might even bring um, the live audio and use it in broadcast. No names will ever be mentioned. No one's going to answer the phone. It'll go straight to a message center. It's secure. It's only ours. Nobody's going to call back or bother you or contact you in any way. Just call and leave the live message. Now, I'm asking uh, of um, many thousands and thousands of possible SRA DID victims. It's time for you to call in. For counselors, police officers, and soldiers... Any person who knows about satanic rituals going on, to call in and leave a message. What do you want everyone else to know about satanic rituals? Anyone who's been in or a part of or worked at or been victims of or even the perpetrators of the ritual at Bohemian Grove or places like it. Don't you think it's time? Don't you think it's time to take the lid off? It's going to be ugly. It's going to look messy. It's going to look horrific. And so I pray for the Spirit of God and of power and boldness and the blood of Christ over all that listen. I pray that out of this week, some believers in Christ will be incensed of the rise of radical evil, that they will stand up to say, here am I, God send me. Like David, who could not stand the mockery flowing from the demonized Goliath or the Nephilim Goliath. There is a Goliath. We've only seen the tip of the iceberg, but the dark, broad, wide, off the scale the satanic iceberg, well, it's all there. It's all there surfacing. Little by little, as it bulges at the seams for the coming chaos, there is no coming chaos, there is no coming anarchy, without this building up of the powers to push and push at the politicians, at, the, uh, at those in the world of economics, to push and to push to influence the masses, to prepare with precursors, New Agers, 2012ers, to guide in a masqueraded, a plotted, planned, masqueraded way, remote viewers, astral projectors, those receiving messages from the other side, the synchronicity of the voices of ancient and powerful beings. Well, it's all ringing out clear. 
The possessed are here in uh, numbers off the scales, all over Europe, all over the United States. That's why believers in Christ have noticed it. That's why more books on spiritual warfare and on deliverance have been written in the last 25 years than in ever of the history of the entire church. And more needs to be said. Do you know about satanic rituals? Do you know about satanic ritual warfare? Do you know about a coven in your city summoning powers, targeting the churches that they have calculated to be strong and powerful and that they need to shut down? Have you understood their desire to attack and compromise leaders? Do you understand they release demon powers into the air around so as to bring a uh, oppression over a region, over a city? Do you understand it's not just one life, one family line, not just one city, not even just one nation. The biblical revelation tells us that the growth of the demonized Babylonian system will be global, unprecedented, far beyond the days of Daniel 2,600 years ago. 56 temples, demon gods and goddesses, all we've looked at, you can look at the ancient rituals. You can look at the old sacrificial systems. You can look in the old days. You can look at the days when magical rituals were done, when uh, Shamash and Marduk and Nebo and uh, Anu and uh, so many others were called upon. Going back to the days of uh, Samaria, to the days of Babylon, Going around the world and see the ziggurats, the ancient temples, Nephilim architecture, demonically guided architecture, temples in their architecture, spiritually communicated and guiding that development. Do you understand where these visions for temples, for an entire civilization like the Mayans... And the thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of human lives. The heads rolled, the blood was spilled, the guts were pulled out, the children were burned and melted. All to the gods and goddesses. Katsikadal is seen in one picture I've got here. Putting a ritual sacrificial knife into the eye and skull of a human being. If you understand what they did in the past... You may understand the Old Testament a little bit better. You may understand that the tribes and the nations that fought Israel again and again and again, trying to annihilate them, trying to literally shut the door on God's manifest work, God operative, you know, back in a fallen, broken world. You do, listen, I don't know if we understand. I don't know if we really understand. The level of this. Can I read you something? Here's the title, Auction for Human Skin-Bound Book. Auction for Human Skin-Bound Book. Now, I've heard about this many, many times over. Years and years of dealing with undergrounders in their descriptions of the rituals, of the twilight languages, of the arrival of the dark presence, of the effect on those in the robes, the reason for the human sacrifice, the reason for prolonging the torture and raising the human energies, literally, in one sense, bringing the blood to a kind of boil, supercharged. It's as if um, not only does it attract whether it's some kind of, um, well, human agony aroma, blood, salt, crystals, however you look at it. The demons come, they attach, they infest the tortured, dying human sacrificial 
victim. Oh, have I seen slides of it at the police department, at the police academy? Hundreds. Throughout the 90s, yes, I've, I've seen slide after slide. Anybody can get a book called The Satan Hunter by law enforcement agent Tom Wedge. And he was really, in the beginning, one that knew the most, but literally, he barely scratched the tip of the iceberg of satanic ritual crime of the blood and guts of human bodies, let alone uh, how they dispose of them. How be it, United States of America, four million claim they were victims of satanic ritual abuse. They all, if they were, have seen and participated in human sacrifice. They know the smells, they know the sounds, they know the presence of the dark side, they know the super secrecy, they know the fear, they have, they have watched the supernatural powers appear. They've discussed with me ancient books being brought out where the rituals include in the ink charged ritual human blood. And the book is bound by the sacrificial victim's skin. Oh, that's, check it out, London. Check it out uh, in some of the oldest libraries of the world. They're there. I'm reading an article right now, quote, a rare book believed to be bound in human skin will go up for auction in South Yorkshire, England on Sunday. It's titled A True and Perfect Relation of the Whole Proceedings Against the Late Most Barbarous Traitors, Garnett, a Jesuit, and his Confederates. Was printed in 1606, is likely bound in human skin of the executed Jesuit priest, Father Henry Garnett, who is the subject of the text. That's one of many others. I have seen in law enforcement academy training rooms, tables, human skulls, human bones, robes, knives, candles, symbols, confiscated materials. Horrifically looking materials. Materials have been brought to me over the years. Unbelievable. One I will never forget. A powerful Psy warrior coming out of Fort Bragg. Deeply entrenched in the ancient brotherhood. Inside many personalities, many dark powers. The ability to speak in multiple languages. Someone who understood uh, and was looking into time travel, physics, all of the latest stuff. Uh, the one that shared the concepts of ritual summoning and the targeting of churches, the sending of powers, the infiltration of the body of Christ. What they and uh, millions of others that have been created since the 50s have been trained, programmed, demonized to do. Bringing a load of stuff to burn. Ancient, old, big pot where blood, dried, dark, blackened blood left. A little wooden box, when you open it up, a human being, naked little hu human man like, a little, a little human toy. It was anatomically correct. It was a toy whose hands had been tied behind his back. It had the ritual. It had all the ritual tools that a real ritual would have. It was literally a practicing kit for children being raised in the old black flame, the ancient brotherhood. 
I'm going to tell you right now that thousands of real satanic, richly abused individuals throughout Russia, Europe, England, Canada, United States, Australia, they can tell you all these stories. I think the lid should be ripped wide off, wide off the, uh, the hinges. I think that there should be massive exposure in obedience to Ephesians chapter 5. Expose evil deeds of darkness. How can you expose what you don't know? And if you're afraid to look, and if you won't read the literature, and if you won't be a part of um, letting God show what is going on behind the supernaturally laced satanic curtain. You want Bible? Ezekiel 8. Behind that satanic curtain, there were rituals going on, serpent worship going on, deep in the caverns, in the city of God, in the nation of God, right where the prophet lived, and nobody knew. And I'm going to tell Americans right now, in your city, satanic rituals have been going on. You've got one satanic, richly abused person you can find? Guaranteed coven exists. And they're the kind of coven, bloodline to ancient Europe. They know the stuff. They know the ancient rituals. They know the ancient ways. They are laced in layers of supernatural power, dark power, and it cannot be penetrated by man. You're going to have to get before God and pray in your city and ask God to uh, literally... Um, Take the sword of the Lord, in a sense, and cut in and through. That is, if you and I, as people that claim to be believers in the living Christ, that is, if we don't sit around biting our fingernails, afraid that the boogeyman's coming after us. Aren't you sick of the fear? Aren't you sick of the trepidation? Aren't you sick of the uh, timidity? There are millions of victims. There are millions of victims uh, glued to the New Age movement. And uh, the wave after wave after wave of satanic blanketing will come. Everyone's been correct about the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst is going to be unleashed. But just knowing about that, sitting in a corner with a can of corn, surely isn't what God would want. David didn't sit in the can in the corner with a can of corn hiding from Goliath. Nehemiah didn't sit in the corner with a can of beans hiding from those that came to threaten their lives as they rebuilt temple. Gideon didn't hide. Samson didn't hide. Deborah didn't hide. Esther didn't hide. Listen to me. In the name of Jesu Christu, whose blood has cleansed you, the Spirit of God dwells inside of you. You are not just loved by God, indwelt by God, secure in Christ. You not only know the living Christ as a believer in Jesus. I'm not appealing to those that don't know. I'm not appealing to spiritual seekers. You don't have the authority. You don't have the right. You don't have the Spirit of God inside of you to see the difference. New Agers can't help. Remote viewers can't do it. 2012ers will be caught up in the precursors that lead to the Antichrist. I'm talking to believers, born of the Spirit of God. Greater is the one that dwells within you than he who dwells. You know, the, the, the prince of the power of the air, operative. And all of hell is being unleashed to seduce and steal as much of humanity as possible. And yet we have the mission of God, the power of God, the word of God, the gospel of God, the signs and wonders of God, the hand of God, the living Christ. We've got all of heaven to back what it is, God's mission is, and that is for the salvation of lives even in these days. 
Maybe you don't want it, but I'm seeking revival. I'm seeking God's power to strike. I want to win the next person over there to Jesus. I want to engage the Satanists, engage the New Agers. I make no bones about it. I make no apologies. I'm not ashamed to say God's love compels me to love humanity. God loves sinners. It is God in Christ by his blood that turns sinners into saints. Now I will ask you tonight what it is you're going to do with what you're hearing. When everybody on the spiritual scales are saying that in the next year, the next two years, um, everything may change. The great chaos may unleash the end of things, the rise of Antichrist. And listen, if we are on that moment in history when these doors will open. The words of Jesus, of the unprecedented, the absolute off-the-scale unprecedented days, well, they are here. And I'm going to tell you, and my report from the trenches, is that there is no advance to any of this without the manifest satanic powers, whether masqueraded as light or lethally raw, the bloody power demons. That power needs to be here to do the work. That power needs to be here to grip the politician, the, econ- the, the, the economists, to grab the world and push it towards, you know what it is, I know what it is, Luciferic globalism. And it burns my britches that they will sacrifice a child and eat it. It burns my britches that there are so many victims with programming and sub-personalities that are fighting to get out of it and fighting to find wholeness. And, and, and counselors and workers are giving all that they've got to try to do something. In America... There's probably about three or four or more million intact, satanically, ritually produced chosen ones. Subpersonalities, they are trained in assassination, bombings, killings, subterfuge, infiltration, disinformation. They are trained, programmed, demonized, waiting. Well, some are being used, but waiting for the big call. If you think it's just another day in paradise today, then maybe it's time to quit cutting out hundreds of Scripture, biblical revelation trying to be like the three monkeys, see no evil, hear no evil, uh, participate in no evil. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to see it. I don't want to talk about it. Well, it's very easy to shut this off. It's true. What we bring to you is the tip of the iceberg. What we have seen is, um, is so shocking that it could not be put on television. But yet, look what they put out. Look at the movies out right now, Case 39, The Devil. Look at the things that have been coming out lately, The Last Exorcism. It's all speaking about culture. Look at, look at the movies about the end of the days and the end of the world and everything else that's going on. And yet there's an accuracy, accuracy that God has given there is revelation that God has given that is, um, that is able to educate us and uh, put you at the cutting edge of knowing and then knowing what to do, how to live in a power that has come from on high, clothed, experienced. Does the believer know the authority of Christ? Does the believer know the armor of God? Can churches... Get past praying for 38 seconds on a Sunday morning corporately and move to a half hour of 40 minutes of sustained, spirit-led intercession and warfare prayer. What are you going to do? Philip 
one individual, Acts chapter 8, you can see what he did. So in this providential moment, in which I believe that it's the providence of God, for the reconners, I pray the blood of Jesus, his authority, his name, the Spirit of God summon you. I ask that Jesus will destroy the demons, the power demons, those entrenched deeply in, embedded, that literally a massive power encounter by the hand of God would come to set you free and let you call on the name Jesus Christ. And when you do, there's an exchange of the lies, exchange of the filth of the dark side for the glory of God, the blood of Christ, the cleansing, and uh, incredible incredible, out of death, hell, and Satan's camp, and into the embrace of God. Listen, ancient rituals and dark powers in Babylon, the ancient gods, the ancient goddesses, the sacrifices that were going on. I mean, listen, it's all over the web. I just ordered a brand new book. It's all about the rituals. I mean, you can go back to the Bible and study it again in the Old Testament days. You're going to see, maybe because it was um, avoided, looked over, untouched. Ancient Israel was immersed in a spiritual battle that was bloody, that was massive, that was uh, constantly uh, beckoning and coming to them and drawing them to the point that they would... If nobody would stand up, if nobody would stop, if nobody would resist, if nobody would stand in the name of the God of heaven, Yahweh Adonai, well, you, you read what occurs, Second Kings 21-22. Manasseh sacrificed his own son on the slab, on the altar, to Moloch. In human agony and pain, with bloodshed, a parent... What made him think this was okay? What made him listen? This is uh, this is demonic dadake. This is the teaching that we've been trying to tell you that convinces human beings, convinced the minds, convinced all across the board, convinces the black flame undergrounders in Europe. It convinces them to be in the deep tunnels below the Vatican. It convinces them to do the human sacrifice here, there, and everywhere to get the powers, summon the powers, bring them on over, obtain them, transfer them, release them, send them to attack their enemies, place them in the air, and then guide these underground elitists to gather the world's elite political, economic, media, military individuals. Take them out there onto the grounds by the Russian River, United States of America, California, Bohemian Grove. There's all these world leaders. There's American presidents, senators, millionaires, media moguls, military leadership. And they're in the backwoods watching. What they think or what they are being told is a mock human sacrifice with an ancient deity, demon god, totem, 40 feet up into the air, the owl sits. Hooded individuals bring the they call it an effigy of a human being. All the victims from Bohemian Grove say it's a real human being. There are those at Bohemian Grove that know there are those that are unwittings. But they know what they're doing. They've gathered the world's elite. They've done the ritual. They've thrown the human into the fires. They've summoned the powers. And those powers have been sent on senators on the wealthy elite, media moguls, military people, presidents, leadership from around the world. It is literally a smaller version of what Revelation 16 and the sending of those demons to the 
world's political, military, economic elitists. Do you understand the scale? It is global. Do you understand the powers? They are lethal. They hate God. They hate believers in Christ. They hate Christ. These powers, well, they're getting into kids. They're getting into millions who are opening the doors and or answering the call. The other side is knocking. The other side is seeking. The other side is drawing. Those blinded, those who are questing, those who are looking for something supernatural. They have no idea that the bite releases the venom that binds the soul and the life and the mind and the heart to the dark side. And that dark side, once in or on a person, will seek more of their dark brethren. Come possess this soul. The ancient rituals of Babylon, the ancient rituals of the Mayans, every ziggurat, everything in the past, you know what's happening? It's as if the demon gods, small g, of those days that are locked into the territories are synchronizing their work and calling for researchers, filmmakers, that have already got the precursors of deception, the layering of spiritual blindness. Come down to the Mayan temples. Come down and take the drugs and seek the spirits and engage. Come down and talk to the entities. Isn't this cool? Isn't this elite? Don't you want to do a documentary? Don't you want to write a book? Don't you want to sit on the steps of the Mayan temple where the heads of humans rolled in the blood of humanity? flowed like a river. They want it all to occur again. Oh, and it's been occurring. And some calls have already come in. And I'm going to, I'm going to say to those, and I'm going to speak specifically as an American to American citizens, but I know that Russians and, and Germans and Finns and Swedes and, and the French and many others from up to 80 countries of the world will download these kind of things in the weeks to come. Spiritually, there is a vast danger. Heaven and hell is real. God and the devil are real. Where do you stand? What side of the fence? It will become clear as the days come closer to the great chaos, the Antichrist, the abyss, and the Armageddon. I want you to hear us when we say that um, there is an answer, and the dark side knows it, and the angels of God who have never defected know it. But millions of, billions yet don't. My concern is about you. Are you saved? Does the Spirit of the living Christ dwell in you? Do you know God? Do you have the gift of eternal life, forgiveness? Did you know that God loves you? God knows you and God wants you. Did you know the Spirit of God is summoning you and calling and reaching out around the world, every tribe, every language, every people group? Christ died, pos anthropos, the sum total of humanity. We're going to say again tonight, this is Russ Dizdar. If you're a new listener, listen for all the information concerning us, shatterthedarkness.net, on the web. Well, a little place close to Erie, Pennsylvania, we saw it on the tree. It looked like a little robed individual with a crescent moon you know, across its head pointing upwards. It was the black mass indicator. We'd been taken back deep, deep into the woods, now, I've told this to some, and some have heard it at conference. This is the place where a number of us had been taken to see an area that had been used uh, in deep, ancient, uh, multi-generational uh, satanic rituals. But the black mass indicator was there, along with many others. 
that was the place that when I drove down in, let everybody out of the car, they went searching for the bones. They were digging. As I sensed the area, I could feel the powers. Uh, I can sense the presence of the enemy. Like in some houses where rituals or heavy-duty doorways have been opened up, sometimes in individuals you can feel. Listen, as a believer, the Spirit of God dwells in us. And there is a sense, uh, a sense they know of your presence, and if you're uh, walking uh, alert, you will know of theirs. Deep down in the center, I stood looking around, feeling what would seem like hundreds of demonic entities in the air, all connected. See, where human blood, animal blood, and where rituals like this were done, they have come through. They have, uh, they have uh, claimed the land, the doorways, and they summon their people back, the coven. Those who do the black mass, those who do human sacrifice, those who do destruction rituals, those who do chaos and death rituals. Oh, that's not the only place. It's not the only place. The places that we know about, where we've been. But let me tell you that it was the first place I have seen the black mask, the indicator. At the University of Akron, the police academy had confiscated a cassette tape of uh, somebody who performed the Black Mass with all of the uh, verbiage and all the things that were done and uh, the sounds and all the rest. Every time they play it for students in that class, it's very eerie. Those who were taking occult and satanic crimes, the course in the academy. I know that a lot of academies, police academies, have long since moved away from this as if the satanic panic of the 80s and 90s have, have gone away. They've just gone more underground, they're more protected, and there's more of it than ever and more to come. Listen, let's uh, ask the Lord Jesus to uh, sanctify this hour, put his hand over it in providence, and claim the name of Jesu Christu, Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit over all that listen live right now, and over all those that will download. So welcome to the Russians and the Poles and those in Angola, in France and Spain and England and Scotland and the United States. Welcome to all of those in uh, Mumbai and uh, for those in, uh, well, Manila and uh, the Hawaiian Islands, Canada, Australia, in Brazil, in South Africa, in Kenya, and down there in uh, Johannesburg, over there in Mexico, and listen, all around, we want to say that we remember all of you. I will pray and I will trust that uh, in this time it may be a divine appointment for you. So I got this note, no names, but I, I do want to at least read part of it. It says, I have a long story and they give me a link to the full story. But it goes like this, quote, Long story short, I've been a Christian, uh, a weak one, since 99. And a few years ago, got back into UFOs and started believing in what L.A. Marzulli calls the alien gospel. Then about a year ago, I started listening to Future Quake. It's a radio station. Mike Bennett. Dr. Future, great place to go. And, and I'm, that's my comment on that. And, and I heard you on there. Then I started listening to preemption broadcast. And it was super intense. You preached about aliens and ascended masters, and it really woke me up. Now, when he says this, and I'm, this is my comment, uh, he means by bringing exposure to what they really are on the demonic side. He goes on to say, I began devouring God's word, starting in the prophets, and God led me to repentance. Since then, my walk as a believer has gotten a lot better. Just want to thank you. And uh, here's what it says. Though you were intense, the love of God hit me. And I loved that. Listen, you, you listening to me, you know that I'm going to bring you some blood and guts. And uh, 
you got to realize that, uh, in my perspective, the church is way behind in understanding the day that we're living in. Uh, on a prophetic scale, let alone on the contemporary realities. So when I start talking about 500 million rituals that have been done in the United States alone, but listen, I want you to realize that um, part of what we do is bringing exposure out of obedience to the Word of God, Ephesians 5, to expose. Well, you can't expose what you don't know. And uh, so there's a lot of research, but so much of it is based in just engagement, face-to-face, and all that we've done over all of these 25 years and continue to do. By the way, we're going to be into Pennsylvania next week. We're going to be there a couple of times. We're going to be talking to victims. We're going to be talking to those who have tried to help victims. We're going to be looking up some places. And uh, if we get, by God's grace, the opportunity, we're going to stop by a journalist that some of you may know, Sue, and I'm going to let her know that we're going to stop by to pray for her and uh, seek uh, God's grace for her life. Now, listen, we've had interaction with numerous law enforcement individuals over the years. We have been taken by law enforcement individuals into police academies to learn to be in advanced cult crime you know, training courses, to see the slides, uh, and to see the blood and guts of real human sacrifice, death, crime, he- beheadings uh, in, in those rituals, and, well, just every kind of horrific thing. I mean, the desecration of the human body. You know that abduction goes on everywhere. And just last week in our area, an eight-year-old girl, they they attempted to get her. Now, the reason I bring this up because of a story, again, I'm going to tell you quickly. Uh, In my office, when I was still pastoring a local church, a lady is brought in to me and begins to tell me how she was raised in in the Akron area, that her mother was into Satanism, that she'd been taken to Satanic rituals, that, uh, that they fled to Oregon. That the mother and the boyfriend live in Oregon. They are Satanists, and they practice. The girl got away, and she lives in fear of them coming. But she wanted to tell the story about a man. When she named him, I had no idea anybody knew this named Kaino and uh, this priest, this Babalal, this, well, I don't know, he had a kind of a conglomeration of ritual teaching and background, but uh, he was pretty powerful. And he was very sadistic uh, in sexual ritual and everything else. We heard the reports for years about his cannibalism, too, and the rituals. And we engaged a federal officer's wife who had been uh, taken by him numerous times and uh, major interactions. It involved all kinds of prayers, demonization, weapons, all kinds of things along the way. Don't have time to go into all of it. Other than to say this, the woman tells us that Uh, In a house in the greater Akron area, there's where they did sexual rituals on her. They had a little boy. They did rituals on him. And then they carved him up. And then they ate him. She described in detail the little boy, his shirt, his pants. But the remarkable thing was his socks being these bright, fluorescent-looking little socks. So as always, to verify stories, you know, our goal has always been to go and get the physical evidence. Here's what we found. If what someone is telling us is true, then there's going to be evidence, and we've, we've, we've been glued into that, that issue. Find the evidence. Go after things. Especially if the abductors are still there, if the perpetrators are still there, if those who have done this, if human beings worshiping Satan, calling on the powers, uh, sexually abused a young teenage girl and then killed in ritual sacrifice a little boy and ate him, that I want, that I want something done. It more than burns my britches to hear of something like that. But that's what they did among the Mayans. That's what they've done to the ziggurats all over the world. That's what they've done in the ancient days. That's what all of those ritual demonized uh, tribes all around Israel did constantly. Do you know how many victims I've talked to over 25 years? Too many times I've listened to the stories and been taken to the sites, to barns, where carcasses of ritually used uh, animals were still there, where blood, where places where you can, for me anyway, feel it in the air. 
So you've got to understand, on the one side, it's all about the love of God, the love of Christ, the mercy of Christ. But you've got to know that the Word of God, 1 John 3, 8, says this, The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. You've got to understand, Jesus coming the first time, let alone the second, was a, a, a spiritual act of war. It was spiritual warfare out of heaven. The cross was all about a spiritual war. If you're lost, you are a casualty of that spiritual war. You are separated from God. You are lost. And you are in uh, personal and eternal danger. So I would only... Uh, urge you, look at the cross, look at Christ. Why? Ask the questions. Take a look. Why would you fear looking at one that claims they've come for you and loves you and died for you and shed his blood for you and then rose from the dead? Listen, satanic rituals being done by the hundreds of thousands. And I know sometimes people say to me, I don't want to hear that. One lawyer locally here said to me, Russ, I'm glad you're out there doing that. Because it scares the blankety-blank out of me. A pastor that we knew and loved very much in the area was doing a series of messages on spiritual warfare. We asked him to come to a great big Shadow the Darkness banquet and uh, speak, and he did. And he shared with everybody all of the factors, and it was a great message. And then when he was done, he said, if anybody knows of a possessed person or somebody that's deeply involved that needs deliverance, well, instead of saying, bring him to our church... He said publicly, send him over to Russ's office. And uh, I, I got a kick out of that, but I also had to yell out loud, no, send him to your office. We have um, so many. And the truth is, all believers should be trained in soul winning, discipling, uh, prayer, worship, giftings and workings, deliverance. Luke 10, that's the call. You check it out. The Black Mass, 19, listen, 1896, some people say. Way back in the 1800s, you know, going on, mostly, listen, everything that I've read concerning it, both by Satanists and by historians and others. And let me say something about historians. If they do not understand occultism and uh, the motivations, powers, and things behind it, uh, they will not get history correct. When, And I've got a couple hundred books here on the Nazis. And the historians, most of them, completely excluded the uh, occult and satanic origins of the political, scientific, psychological, military um, uh, ideologies and inception and so forth. So unless you really understand uh, the backgrounds, it's very hard to, um, in a secular sense, write about it. So uh, very important as we look at all of this material, bottom line, when it comes to the black mass, it involves a supposed naked uh, woman virgin on the altar. Uh, again, it's all about uh, something done against the Catholic Church, very um, deeply used uh, in France, maybe had its origin in France, uh, the Queen. In France, Catherine uh, was said to have uh, involved was involved with this uh, black mass. Other political leaders later on, uh, we we we've looked at uh, well not only Catherine uh, Medici, uh, Queen of France, but but others. Uh, and you'll read the history of it there because it involves a defrocked or um, or kicked out priests, Catholic priests. These are individuals that uh, then took the Catholic mass. With the host and the uh, and the cop and the and the and the altar and all the elements, the robes and everything, and uh, was supposed to kind of flip it upside down. And uh, in some parts of it, there is also the idea of a baby being sacrificed on the belly of the virgin. And it's all about again, um, in one sense, blasphemy against the Catholic version. Of this ma of the regular mass, doing Latin scripture backwards, and uh, many of the other things. Listen, there's so much now on it. There wasn't back in the '80s, and more and more was coming out. I was given a French hand-typed version of this done by an occultist, by a by a law enforcement agent that gave it to us. And so we have looked at the literatures. We've seen, you know, the backgrounds of it. But there's been those who have practiced it. 
There's a rock group, uh, Pest, that sings a song, The Black Mass. There's a group called The Black Mass. There's a group called Coven. So a number of the satanic bands that are out there, many of the satanic bands of the worst of the worst of the worst kind, Europe, uh, the Scandinavian nations, and it's unbelievable to hear the lyrics that involves summoning demons, inviting kids to uh, join and uh, receive Satan, uh, to uh, have blood that would be that would be uh, tasted or drunk at the uh, concerts. There's a great book out there called The Lords of Chaos. One of the MP3s I do in that 25-hour course, free for you if you want the education without involvement. Then uh, and again, it's only basic. If you're a Satanist or deep underground or looking at it, you might, you know, say, oh, this is light level. But the majority of um, normal people have never, um, have no idea. Because of the laws of secrecy, because the Word of God calls it a mysterium, a hidden, secretive law of, uh, lo- a pro- power of lawlessness that is operative. So if you understand the biblical revelation that this power, if you think in terms of Satan and uh, his operating uh, engagement with Jesus, Matthew 4, when he couldn't do anything and lost in the engagement, he goes out looking for a more opportune time. When he came to the disciples and Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan is just asked to sift you all's wheat. They had no knowledge. Again, you're dealing with what with visible eyes we cannot see. And for those of all of us that see in this world, we it's it's like we got to see something if it's going to be real, and uh, that is our uh, mistake. That is our mistake. Even Jesus, in dealing with Thomas, the doubter, that finally, when he saw the resurrected Christ, fell down on his knees and cried out, "My Lord, my God!" He'd seen now. He'd touched. Jesus said, well, Thomas, you know, you believe because you see. Blessed are those who believe but don't see. I've never visually, physically seen Christ, but I know him, and I've walked with him, and he's inside. He's the joy. I've talked with him today and uh, spent an hour with my wife uh, out in the countryside, actually, uh, we're doing a pray out. We call it a pray out where we just pray and pray and pray until we're all done. And we're talking to the Lord. We're, we, you know, listen, it is a relationship. That's what it is. A relationship. Every believer listening right now, it's the inseparable living Christ dwelling in you. The joy of that is a relationship. And then there is, uh, you know, our enjoyment, our privileges, but there is also mission and uh, what needs to be done in these radical days you and I are living in. Well, they're radical because uh, of the ramping up. We are talking about a massive ramping up of Satanism, not only in the popular, the traditional, like the Cathedral of the Black Goat there in, uh, in California, but we're talking about the underground, the real bloodline, brotherhood, Illuminati, the real stuff that uh, many pastors, counselors, psychiatrists, psychologists uh, have engaged in dealing with satanic ritual abuse. Now that there's been over 4 million diagnosed cases and now there's been 30 years, some of you listening to this are, are the counselors and psychiatrists and people who have been out there helping. Some have done it from the office, 50 minutes, and that's okay. It will not go very far. Others have spent, again, hours and hours, thousands of hours, and then um, tracking it, going after it, engaging the perpetrators, the ritual sites, and even coming to the point of catching it in live mode. You know, we've been to where the girls were slaughtered and killed and ritually done. We've walked on the grounds. We've prayed over those grounds in Deerfield, Ohio, where Catherine and, and uh, Kathy and, and where Sarah, both, a 14-year-old and a 17-year-old. Now, we're talking about the horrific stuff here, guys, and, uh, and law enforcement's been engaged, and we went to four different police law enforcement agencies. Evidence was turned over. Feds got a hold of the case now. And you know what? They still haven't brought the cult multiple that was responsible for doing it. 
And there's a lot of crime like that. you got to understand from the inside. And I've only had a partial inside view a few times at the academy, a few times in other uh, high-level training, uh, advanced courses and things like that, materials and stuff given to me from law enforcement. But it's enough to see hundreds of slides and hundreds of things and to hear what law enforcement says from the inside out. you got to understand some law enforcement people don't even want to deal with it. Some law enforcement individuals come to me, officers, and want to know how to spiritually protect themselves when they deal with going into houses and going into places where the signs and symbols and blood and candles and pentagrams and all that stuff is there. And so we're glad to help out in that area. And let me say to law enforcement agents, the series that we have on the website called Dark Rituals, Dark Powers, now listen, that's got a couple of one-hour training sessions that were purposely made for law enforcement uh, in this area of uh, occult crimes. And by the way, Tuesday night, uh, if you look on the website to the right of the discussion, what I have down is the discussion line, the Black Mass and Rituals of Dis Destruction, Chaos, Death, and Summoning Dark Entities, right next to that is a, uh, well, the word Satanic Crime. You, it's, uh, you can click on that, and it's a free book, an absolute book. Now, it's done by the Catholic guy, uh, William Kennedy. And he's done a first book called Lucifer's Lodge, where he's gone in among the Catholic system. By the way, I'm doing a series on Roman Catholicism coming up. They, uh, they have done the tracking down of the sexual abuse. By the way, the hundreds and hundreds of Catholics that have been raised, that have been sexually abused as boys and girls in the black rooms. What has not come out very broadly is that so much of that was in satanic rituals. That's right, massively, massively infiltrated. And satanic rituals. So the second book that William Kennedy puts out, now I'm talking about a guy that's a Catholic putting this out about Catholics. And then laying out another book on satanic crimes. And it's absolutely free. And I've linked to that free PDF file right off of our website. So you can have a free book. You can have uh, an entire college-level course, 25 hours of lectures or more, if you want that off a website. Now, that's going to give you a lot of information because, um, you know, going over the Black Mass and uh, summoning the powers, and it involves a lot of things. If you understand the dark side's goal of getting to this side, then you know the pressure from that side to this is to find the individuals that they can draw. Let me tell you one of the key factors for a dabbler level that can grow into a traditional level, something very deep and serious. Sean Sellers did this. Sean Sellers, who eventually took off his protective uh, pentagram he said that he had on his chest and, and what he was wearing, and in his closet where he had a satanic altar where he did his worship and drank blood. Well, after he took everything off, here's what Sean says. In a video I saw at Youth for Christ training session in Michigan, in the video where leaders from that work went to him, Sean says he felt his chest expand from the influx of demonic presence. He went out with a gun, shot his mother in the head, shot his stepfather, killed them both. He even says that with a kind of satanic glee, he laughed, cleaned up, left the house, went to a buddy's house, only to fake it first, coming home, and his parents are dead. And he, as if he didn't know, but he he got he got um, nailed for the crime. Uh, there's a book out by Linda Stone about the history and the background of her life and uh, her information about Sean Sellers. It's a big story from years ago, but it's one of many. So we have uh, massive rituals throughout the Catholic Church, infiltration in the rest of the body of Christ, where those who have infiltrated used, now let me tell you one story quickly, um, satanic rituals, not a full black mass, uh, but again, I want, you to, I want you to hear this, a black mass is not a massive major, I mean it's massive and major, uh, it's all about blaspheming the Catholic mass and Christianity in that version, but it's 
clearly not the deep, darkest of rituals, including uh, the deepest, darkest are human sacrificial rituals, where a prolonged torture, bloodletting, raising of the energies, sexual perversion, all of this is done over an hour or two hours so as to so build the uh, and raise the energies human-wise uh, to bring in the most powerful demonic presence through that gateway and then kill the individual in the end. And then, well, we'll talk about this. They receive the powers. They... Um, can uh, take them in, get powers and abilities. They can uh, take them in for their coven, their group. They can uh, have uh, demons come in and speak through individuals at a coven meeting. They can, they can literally uh, transfer them in some of the ritual acts, sexual transference too. They can also do it to summon them to send them. Send them on pastors and local churches that they've already targeted. Actually, I've gotten story after story, and now I've seen it written in books, where pastors and leaders throughout the 90s have told us about waking up around 3 o'clock in the morning. You see, when the rituals begin and everything's all done and the demons are sent, well, they're sent sometime around there to whoever they are uh, that has been targeted. And so, you know, you're waking up for whatever reason, three in the morning. You're feeling something weird. You're hearing something. Some people have said they've heard something strike the roof. They felt something enter the room. Uh, they gotten sick all of a sudden. They had uh, gory, bloody dreams. They felt something. Uh, all kinds of things. They Many have talked about their dog's uh, animal uh, being aware of something and barking like crazy, and they don't see anything. I would say then, stand up, ask the Lord Jesus, the Spirit of God, to give you an awareness and where it's coming from, and use your authority and command its presence to be bound and broken and sent back if necessary, and uh, ask the Lord to lead you in targeting those who sent it, for God to visit them and trouble them to no end. To expose them. And if it involves uh, child sexual rituals, or if it involves human sacrifice, for God to bring massive exposure, as only God can do. So you got to realize something, and I want this perpetrators, and I want the recon specialists to hear this. It's out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, where it says that nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered. And laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Now, when a few thousand years ago, Ezekiel, the prophet, is standing in the city of God and the nation of God, he doesn't know. Because of the supernatural and the law of secrecy, deep Luciferic serpent worship with human sacrifice was going on. All the signs and symbols all there in the city of God, the nation of God, very close to the prophet of God. And he didn't know. So I'm not saying for believers to beat themselves up. I'm just simply saying that what is there is really there. That it's very clear in Ezekiel chapter 8 that God willed for the believer to know what was going on in the deep reservoirs of the cavern that was not supposed to be found out by anybody. The Spirit of God, God led Ezekiel, and God uh, opened a supernatural hole. And uh, You know the story. You read it, Ezekiel 8. Then he gets led in. That's the only way law enforcement, anybody else, if you're dealing with wanting to find the covens that are in your city. If you want to find the ritual spots in your city, the victims in your city, if you want to bring a prayer to bear against those that have been for 30, 40 years or more raising the demons, creating the underground army, and uh, releasing powers and influencing the city and bringing a dark, oppressive blanket. Why else do you think you got that darkness in the air over your city? They've been unleashing the spirits and bringing them over and filling the air. 
And so many people sit around and say, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. And, uh, well, it affects everything else. But God says your warfare is not against the physical, flesh and blood. It's not. It manifests in the political, the economic, the military. It manifests in the environment. It manifests in the violence. That's where you can see the shock waves. But if you're an attuned, spirit-filled, alert, aware, well, and a believer in action, you you get into the study. You want to find it in your city? I guarantee you what we've learned. We've learned that it can be exposed, uncovered, found. You've got to be persistent. You've got to be consistent. You've got to keep seeking. You've got to ask the Lord, where is it going on in my city? Is it in any daycare center? Have they infiltrated? Are they using and sneaking in any church? What about the backwoods? What about the barns? What about the uh, suburbs? What about any caves in our areas? What about double basements? What about the reports? What about the victims that have been found? Well, you get to begin to minister to victims, and you begin to deal with subpersonalities, and they'll take you. They'll take you to the places. They'll take you. If they feel safe, they'll take you. And again and again and again, you will see. I'm not saying you're not going to have repercussions. The demons know as you come. So you you could be prayed up and know. Listen, one thing about dealing with all of this, you could become stronger than you ever have been in all of your life as a believer. That's right. Because in your city, they are appeasing the demons and the old demon gods. They are uh, summoning them again and again. The powers, the abilities, the transfers. I told you the story about a lady that comes in. I'm not giving up until the perpetrators are dealt with. I'm not giving up until the coven group in Copley area of Ohio, all of the Akron area, and the perpetrators that may have run to Oregon until they're dealt with. And how about Meadville, Pennsylvania? So a law enforcement agent and uh, a staff member take me there. They get a video cam out. They have a victim of satanic ritual abuse. She's six foot four. I'm sitting there talking. She says that a psychologist says that she's healed, and now she can get all of her children, her abused children, back from children's services because she's all healed up. But she wants to know for sure. And she's asking me, do I, you know, so I, I begin simply to work with her. And all of a sudden, all those personalities, all these sexual, ritually oriented priestesses, demonized personalities, they're all in there. As a matter of fact, when I called on one of them to deal with them, they got up instantly and struck me in the face. Not once, but twice. But no more than that. This individual, sub-personalities in them, took us out to the... Um, the old airstrip areas, the old uh, uh, landing places. They took us out to where the indicators for rituals, where the markings for rituals, where the places of the rituals involving children. In this abused individual, a subpersonality came up, a male personality demonized committed to the coven. What was his job? Well, his job was to use a cattle prod with the coven kids. That as he made them perform sexual acts on adults, if they didn't do it right, they would get shocked with the cattle prod. Meadville, Pennsylvania. Every city in Pennsylvania, ritually abused, covens there, kids, sexually, psychologically, spiritually. There's blood on the soil. In PA. And anybody dealing in the area, any psychologist, any counselor, any pastor, it's broader than just the one or two or three or four people you're working with. Ask yourself who did this to them. Every ritually abused, truly ritually abused, means they have demons, means they have coven priestesses, means a lot more, breeders and everything else. And so, listen, here's what it means a coven has been operative in your city, in your township, maybe 50 or more years. And it goes way back. It's all flowed over from uh, Europe and beyond. So as you're listening tonight, my question to you, if you're a believer in Christ, 
You remember the words of God to Isaiah, Isaiah 6. Whom shall I send who will go for us? Let those words fall on your spirit. Whom shall I send? Who's going to go? God said it. I think with millions of victims, millions and millions of lost, some of you think you're waiting on God. God is waiting on you. He's already given the command to go unleash this gospel. There is nothing higher, nothing bigger, nothing broader. The gospel, there's nothing broader out of heaven, nothing bigger, more miraculous than the gospel. Because it involves the uh, instantaneous and eternal change. It involves all the mercy, grace, and love and power of God in saving, healing, delivering, and all of the works that come with it. That's why Paul can say before the uh, blood-soaked Roman Empire in its emperor worship, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God. Listen, whom shall I send? Jesus talked about being clothed with power from on high. That will cut the fear off of your life and endue you with an unction, with the power, dunamis, of the Spirit of the Lord. It's not just for your own good feelings. Our, listen, as a believer, my, my pursuit isn't after the, uh, being, being the happiest and being the mo- living without any problems. <laughs> Is that all we are? Into ourselves? You ever just sell yourself out to say, God, in this bloody spiritual war where heaven and hell are real, God and the devil are real, where people can lose their soul, where people are eating children in a house in Copley, Ohio, in a satanic ritual after abusing a girl, they stole the boy from Pennsylvania, Allentown. Oh, the feds have it up on their site. Absolutely. Lewis. His face is imprinted in my brain, and I'm I'm not going to quit until perpetrators are engaged. Whatever that takes, whatever that takes. So whether it's in Meadville, whether it's in Erie, whether it's in Akron, whether it's in Cleveland, whether it's by the Portage Lakes, my wife's pregnant. We're living on the Portage Lakes at the time. We get a girl in a psychiatric unit led to Christ. She's been raised, splitting her personality, demonizing her. She's been raised in all of this hellishness, creating a transmuted super soldier type person. So the psych ward, she comes to Christ. She wants to get out. Demonization, deliverance, all this is going on. But all of a sudden, we begin to get calls at the time, we didn't know what it was, Enochian chants, some kind of languages, where we would just pick up the phone and hear these kind of chants. We were beginning to be engaged in spiritual warfare as never before. We began to notice individuals coming by our home. I come home one night. Law enforcement agents are there. They run to my car to see who I am. They ask me if I have a pregnant, pregnant wife. And I'm alarmed and alert at this time. I said, yes. Well, what happened? Well, my wife comes home with a friend, next-door neighbor friend, a lady whose husband is a deputy sheriff and a friend of ours. As she goes into her house, people are running out. Of course, she, she runs, and my wife, and they get out of that house, go to our apartment right next door, and they eventually call. They had to find a phone. We were new to the area, and we didn't have our phone in. So they got a phone called. Police came. In the midst of all of it, my wife steps out the door and yells at the people that are out there running. One of them is a young man. He turns around to look, and he's still running, and he runs slam into the house and falls to the ground. They run, and they get into a uh, silver um, car that had a pinstripe. The license plates were taken down. It was the two brothers of the girl victim we were helping. And the mother 
mother of darkness, priestess. They had been calling. They had been summoning powers. They had been sending chants. They have come to engage us and bring harm. They were caught. Years later, when one of the young boys was in the jail system, I went to see him. Being a multiple, we began to talk, and I said, Do you remember when you came to our home, your mother, the priestess, vicious in the sub-levels of her life, uh, do you remember what occurred? And all of a sudden, he reiterated the whole story, what they were there to do, how he was running, how he ran into the house and fell to the ground. Well, story after story after story. It's all about summoning these powers. Oh, biblically it's clear, and it's clear in contemporary uh, the years that have gone on now. Uh, there's more than ever. There's more all of it going on. And I'm going to tell you in America, I'm going to tell you in Canada, I'm going to tell you in Australia and England, all of Europe, and deeply into Russia. Oh, yes, South America, South Africa. Did you know that the goal behind globalism, well, the, the, the inception, if you hear me now, behind the inception, development, and uh, spiritual fueling of globalism, just like among the Mayan civilization, is being built on the human sacrificial blood. God said it. God said it in 2 Kings 21-22. God gave the report of the entire nation. Nobody was doing anything. It was going on everywhere. There were stories of it, and things were known, and political leaders like Manasseh, he was letting the doors be wide open. And his mind as a father was convinced by the demons. Well, he's he going to sacrifice his own son, and he did. He killed him. It's kind of reenacted out there in California, the Russian River, Bohemian Grove, where our presidents and senators have all been going. God says to that land, and I'm saying to you, you don't have to agree with me, but I'm saying to you that I believe the exact same report could be given to the United States of America, to the European nations. Here's what God says, Second Kings 21, 22. Read it if you want. That innocent blood has been shed from one end of the nation to the other. So I'm getting sick. Something's weird going on. It's like the flu, but it's not. I feel internally weak. Barely could stand up. It was Sunday morning. I was still pastoring a local church. We had seven victims of satanic ritual abuse. We had teams that had been going out, and the groups that have gone to go get the bones and the places and ritual sites and pray. We were learning all this stuff along the, the way of helping and healing and stuff, everything else. Anyway, so I am feeling all this, but I tell my wife something's wrong, but i got to go to church anyway. And when I got there, they brought me up to the front, and they sat me on a stool because I couldn't stand. And I spoke my message uh, that Sunday morning. At the end of the sermon, everything's over. I still feel internally weak, shaky and sick, but not sick. There's a federal officer's wife, high-level multiple, uh, being taken back and forth to the ritual circle of dominion, they called it. We got call after call after call, blood rituals done against. They. This individual comes up with one of the uh, workers and says there's a... There's something on your forehead. Another person comes up right then and there says, there's something on your forehead. They thought that I took a little red dot and put it on my forehead, just kidding around. Three or four people noticed it. Prayer warriors. And the multiple that came forward, the, the really, really, really lethal, uh, dangerous one, the one that tried to kill me. Well, the inside subpart Iris did. They said it's not a red dot. It's a marking spiritually. It's a it's a death ritual pentagram. That pictures of me from the church were taken out of the bulletin, taken to Cleveland to Coco and the rest of the ritually priestesses and so forth. That blood ritual sacrificial stuff was done with the goal of killing you. I listened to the stories. We all prayed it up. 
My wife took me home. I went to bed at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I woke up on Monday morning. Monday morning, I was feeling better but still shaken. My wife's talking to me, and I said, Listen, this is not sickness. This is warfare. I'm going upstairs to pray it off. I went upstairs and began to pray, and it went away instantly. Uh, Listen, across the nation here, it is without question the book Crime Warps back in the 90s said that satanic crime, well, it would be the crime wave of the 90s. In a book called uh, The Edge of Evil by Jerry Johnston, he, and I quote him in my book, when he mentions that um, the fastest growing subgroup through the 90s was um, Satanism among white middle class uh, teenagers. So there was the dabbler level, the Satanic Bible uh, written in 69 or put out in 69, the Satanic Church, Anton LaVey. Uh, That is uh, pretty well known. There's many websites dedicated and uh, the teachings and the connections and you can join. I don't know now, maybe it's $35, $40, $50 you can join. Thousands and thousands of members on a popular level. Yet there are those young people and college students who've gotten a hold of the Satanic Bible. And they have actually practiced the rituals calling on the the demonic entities. So whether popular Satanism believes there is a real entity or not is not the issue. You call on the dark powers and they uh, they will come. In that book there are destruction rituals, sexual rituals, and uh, there is also uh, death rituals, a glimpse of the black mass and other things. But that's very, in the sense of Satanism, light level stuff. I've got another book here called The Devil's Bible, traditional Satanist, describing their version of everything. In the very back, there's a listing of the rituals. But let me tell you, if you can go on the web, and I'm not going to give you the sites, the black mass, death rituals, destruction rituals, chaos rituals, every kind of ritual you can think of. Even one website that I looked at that talked about Christians, a satanic website that talked about Christians learning spiritual warfare. Therefore, they must ramp up their abilities in, and they used the term, spiritual warfare. They talked about ramping up their abilities to learn about how to, again, summon the demons, release the demons, targeting individuals, things like that, churches, whatever else. But there's all kinds of books and materials where dabblers have grabbed a hold of it and uh, began to practice and learn along the way. Even if you read Aleister Crowley, Jack Parsons, and others like that, you're going to find there's a development in their learning in their learning how to do these, how to do these uh, rituals, how to um, how to perform them. And um, one of Crowley's uh, rituals included uh, his, uh, his own son, his own child. And uh, in that ritual, something went wrong. He came out alive, but his son was dead. In the area that we live in, we've engaged ritual sites, We've confiscated from those who came out of uh, underground stuff, uh, tables in the past of ritual stuff, and uh, so much of it we burned to get rid of because the objects demonized, the objects with blood, the objects that can only be used for one thing. And there's so much of it now on the web, in books, in crime, uh, books on the subject. William Kennedy's book is out there free uh, that is called, uh, well, it's just really a book on satanic crime. And he tells us himself that he's probably got the number one book out there listing all of it. It's an accumulation, actually, of like the book Painted Black or Tom Wedge's book, The Satan Hunter, which law enforcement individuals use, or Tony Cowell's book, A Cop's Guide to Investigating the Occult, Satanic Crimes, and the Haitian style or South American style versions with Babalaos, Poleros, uh, the Abakwa, Palomaombi, and the drug lords. All the battle along the border involves drug lords, listen now, that will seek the favor of Santa Murti. Uh, the saint of death, the demon god of death. 
And uh, they will, listen, In the, the, the basic principle is, uh, to the degree that you offer this demon entity, Santimurti, um, well, you can offer it food. You can offer it all kinds of things. You can also offer an animal sacrifice or a human sacrifice. To the degree of your offering will come the degree of uh, powers or favors from the demon gods, from the, from the entities that they are uh, sacrificing to. So for law enforcement to know this, for those along the border, for Mexicans to know this, they know it well. I get emails from those in Mexico talking about their villages that are loaded with this kind of uh, saint worship. But behind the saints are the Orishas, the demon gods and goddesses. Uh, San, listen, whether it's Santa, Santeria or Palomaombi or Abakwa or many of the others, there is some uh, very powerful, dark things that are going on all through Mexico. You ever wonder why you go down to southern Mexico, go all the way down, keep going down into Guatemala, all the way down. You're going to find, again, ancient temples, massive human sacrifice. And listen, the same spirits that were there, you know, 300 years ago or 1,000 years ago are there trying to draw, once again, individuals in the same way. They want them. They want the individuals. It's the doorway that they knock on. It's uh, one of the most powerful ways to bring the dark side over into this side. Now, when you think in terms of the drug trade, listen, all the way up from Florida, through the drug trade lines, all the way up through Ohio, Cleveland, then just left going the expressway, turnpike, then up into Michigan, up into Detroit, and across that way, that is a major, major drug traffic in line. And that will include that, well, we've engaged it directly. One group, the uh, they call themselves the Circle of Dominion. Guatemalans involved. Um, and we've engaged them. They came at 2 o'clock in the morning to our home. Uh, they threatened death. They made phone calls in. They warned us to stay away from one of their richly abused individuals that became part of a courier to um, take packages, drugs, and uh, to make, again, money. So a lot of uh, the stuff that goes on, and again, law enforcement is not even, listen, the drug trade is so vast, secretive, and uh, armed to the teeth that you know the majority of it's not being caught. But you've got to also know now that there is a seeking of demonic favors, powers from demon gods and goddesses using priestesses, poleros, and so forth, and seeking the favors of Santa Murti to bless that drug trade. And listen, by God's providence, if a drug trade or drug lord would ever hear this, you are in the gravest dangers. You are in the most uh, horrific evil that can be spoken. Summoning demons to bless a drug trade that opens lives to the demons that further fulfills prophecy, biblically, revelation, where towards the end, people aren't going to give up their worship of demons, their magic arts, and pharmakia, the drugs that open the door. So there's a great mix and a great variety. And I can only say to the believers in Christ, wherever you're at listening, whether in the archives later all over Europe, listen, we're offering 25 hours free. And just take it and download and get a little bit of insight. It's a basic course. I would say that those in Italy, those in Germany, those in the Scandinavian nations, uh, deeply in Russia, both in the governments, on the field, in uh, where there are pastors and churches, listen, the, the, the depth of this has grown in incredible ways in the last 30 years. And there is no stopping of it right now. We're moving towards the broadest manifestation of demonic presence in human history. Ancient gateways are being opened. Books, ritual books, other materials, 
Uh, listen, on the World Wide Web, what we used to find, you know, in law enforcement and find as obscure uh, rituals and ritual stuff, I'm telling you now on the web, there is so much out there that um, teenagers getting a hold of those kind of rituals, having no idea of how serious the doors they would open would be. We're not talking about the Ouija board, which can also open the door to the, de- uh, to the demonic side. We all know that. But now we're talking about ancient rituals performed by deep, deeply trained uh, Satanists and Luciferians that are now on the web that people anywhere can get a hold of. And listen... Many Christians all over the nations uh, that are beginning to hear about Bohemian Grove, when we talk about the prayer issue and what needs to be done, satanic manifestation, ritual sites, the, the ability to build altars and temples and places and power, the high places, like in the Old Testament, if they go undealt with, please understand there's going to be then localities that become gateways, uh, the places where the practices go on and on and on and on and on. So I'm going to give you some of the things that we've seen today. And that's not just, um, just in Europe alone, talking about some of the uh, deep involvement. Uh, Even with the uh, vampire couple that was jailed for, they call it a satanic murder. Uh, What about the Royal Navy, 2004? A CNN um, a report that uh, talks about um, there is uh, the allowability uh, for Satan worship on those warships. That religious liberty is broad and going to give it to Wiccans and Druids, but also pure Satanism. And that's true in the United States, as uh, Colonel Amaman knew this, and uh, also, well, Michael Aquino himself says it concerning every single military base, they're claiming there is a Satanic grotto uh, and, and on every single one of them. Now, whether the it's an overstatement by uh, Michael Aquino, out of U.S. military, retired now, but uh, the founder of the Temple of Set, if these are true and we hear the stories, if it's allowed, I've seen the chaplain's manual, U.S. military, where, again, they do have to open the doors for uh, Wiccans and others, but a satanic grotto. Now, that's dealing with the popular style. That's not even going into the underground and dealing with this long uh, trans um, national, uh, multi um, uh, national, and um, multi generational, the real Luciferic, you know, bloodline group. Now, that'll be the most secretive, the most supernaturally empowered, and it really is the um, foundation for globalism, the rise of Antichrist. These are the people you're going to talk about being directly engaged with, um, with you know, bringing in the Antichrist and being the servants and being a part of all of it. But wherever you look, it doesn't make any difference. Let me give you this story. And it came from the Catholic News Agency, not some anti-Catholic group, but the Catholic News Agency. Here's the title. Alarm in Italy as growth of Satanism creates market for consecrated hosts. Now, they're dealing with, in this article, and I quote this, one of the directors of the emergency helpline that are going to try to assist. Now, I, I, I've shared this before where they were trying to set up a help a helpline in Germany where they were going to open it up to anybody who's been abused in the Catholic Church and also satanic abuse and so forth, that they've got so many thousands of calls in one day alone that it sh- they had to shut down the lines. They were only able to get to 100 and some individuals. A- amazing. Amazing to me when they opened up the, the, you know, uh, the phone line, uh, a helpline. And so I'm reading now, and I quote this. Quote, in statements published in the Catholic magazine, they explain that a proliferation of cults exists 
which practice black masses with the uh, while they profane the consecrated hosts rape and tortures involved and so they list all these and one of the reports lists that there may be up to over 8000 different groups in Italy alone with well over um, close to 700,000 members and the uh, Catholic Church over there is crying out for uh, in training, quote, R- Roman Catholic exorcists in uh, that version of trying to do something about it. And when I look at all of that and I say that there's great infiltration in the Vatican, great, uh, deep and broad satanic ritual abuse, this is the place that ancient European styled in France, throughout Italy, because it's all about mocking the Catholic Catholic Mass and uh, everything about it. So you've got the European style, but it is lethal. It is real. You've got uh, former priests. Now I, I'm I'm reading about how even consecrated hosts, that is uh, the taking of the bread, the idea that um, they can sell them and make money. Uh, among other groups. This article talks about LSD, cocaine, and so forth. Ex-priests who have offered themselves in the service of Satan. That's what the article says. And actually, in the Catholic News Agency, they have numerous articles about about this kind of Satanism uh, all over Rome. Oh, in the Vatican, the con- the concept of, uh, well, here's another one. The Times, the Sunday Times article. This is March 2010. Chief Exorcist Gabrielli Amaroth says, Devil is in the Vatican. Devil is in the Vatican. And the article goes on, quote, Sex abuse scandals in the Roman Catholic Church are proof that, quote, the devil is at work inside the Vatican, according to the Holy See's chief exorcist. Now listen, they got an 85-year-old exorcist that is claiming that he's been involved, he alone has been involved and dealt with 70,000 cases of demonic possession. Including, including, now listen, quote, that, the consequences of satanic infiltration included power struggles at the Vatican, as well as uh, cardinals who do not believe in Jesus and bishops who are linked to the demon. I'm quoting that. Let me quote it again. And again, this comes from an 85-year-old exorcist out of the Roman Catholic Church telling us that he's been involved in 70,000 cases. And I quote now, he says that the consequences of satanic infiltration included power struggles at the Vatican, as well as cardinals who do not believe in Jesus and bishops who are linked to the demon, end of quote. He added, I'm quoting again, he added, quote, when one speaks of the smoke of Satan, a phrase used by Pope Paul the Sixth in 72, in the... The smoke of Satan in the holy rooms, it is all true. Now, I'm telling you now, for all the Catholics listening, this comes from a Catholic priest, an exorcist, 85 years old, claiming involvement in 70,000 cases. And he's talking about the smoke of Satan in the holy rooms. And he's saying these words, I quote it, quote, it is all true, end of quote. And quoting again, quote, including these latest stories of violence and pedophilia, end of quote. Quote again, he claimed that another example of satanic behavior was the Vatican cover-up of the deaths of uh, the captain of, a commander of, and others in the Swiss Guard. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, the incredible uh, spiritual battle on the inside. What lies beneath the Vatican? What lies in all those miles and miles of deep underground? Did Malachi Martin reveal 
that a a ritual welcoming the birth of the Antichrist was done at St. Paul's? This is we're talking about the Roman Catholic institution worldwide. I'm not going to deal with the political, the syncretism, the liberalism, the uh, you know, non-biblical side. we got a whole series coming up on this issue. I'm just simply saying that in this uh, big, massive religious institution, and especially in Italy, we've got massive, massive reports. Italy is packed. Packed with uh, Satanism in many different varieties. And uh, of the most um, sophisticated styles, including the ancient and oldest brotherhood forms. So the question is going to be right now, will there be those there in Roma or in Italy that will eventually listen? There are those that monitor that will send to the MP3s that we do along to others. The question is, will anybody um, engage this? Will anybody bring deeper, broader exposure? Will anybody really? Listen, it's one thing to say you're going to investigate as a reporter, but you can't break into the depth of it without supernatural power. And I point you again to Ezekiel chapter 8 to learn this. The book of Ezekiel chapter 8. I'll leave it up to you to study it. Heads up to the Satanists. Heads up to those involved. It's not as though God doesn't see. It's not as though listening right now, God doesn't engage you to get out of it while you can. That a holy and pure blood was shed at the cross. And even your demons know the authority and the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. They know Yahweh Adonai. They know God's name. They know God's presence. They know God's power. They know what God's going to do. They already know it based on biblical prophecy. They know the judgment. On that side, there is vast information. That's why they're in a hurry. Realize that there's no advance to the satanic cause, to globalism, to the infecting of the political ideology, military vision, and the economic structure worldwide without real, manifested, operative, dark powers. And the primary place to create the door to let them in and through an operative, human sacrifice, blood rituals. America, you've got it from nation, one end of the nation to the other. Europe, the belly of the beast, across the board. Russians, no doubt about it. Now, I'm going to give you the answer again, why, in just a moment. But I want to read you another report. Russian satanic cult foiled in an attempt to infiltrate the police. Again, 2010 article, I quote, A devil-worshipping cult encouraged its members to join the police force in a bid to extend its influence. A court, uh, Listen, a court in the Central Russian Republic of Mordovia heard on Friday. Investigators say that uh, this, this, this coven, this group, um, recruited young people from across the region for years. For years. And they were, again, raised in all of the sexual side of it, the ritual side of it, and they were wanting to place them in the police departments to infiltrate, to use... Um, And it involves uh, sex trade, drug trade, everything else, but very dark powers in Russia. It goes on to say this, and I quote, The cult's attempt to infiltrate the police are believed to have ended in failure, with at least one member rejected due to his strange tendencies. Now, the investigation and surveillance footage aired by Russia's Channel 5 showed one cult member boasting that he would kill somebody without him even knowing of what he died of. Other scenes showed youths in darkened rooms stripped, stripping and chanting. Uh, Sex rituals, blood rituals, raising of powers, sending them, cursing individuals. 
Unbelievable report in Russia, but it's not the only one. As a matter of fact, there's one here. I quote again, six Russian Satanists slaughter and they eat four other teenagers. And the you know what's really weird? The pictures of the four eaten teenagers are right here on the web. I mean, you can look it up. I'm looking at it from Sideline uh, Music Magazine, and it refers to them uh, eating uh, four goth other kids. Unbelievable. They, um, again, you, you ask the question, you know, what would lead them to this in their thinking? How's that any different than, um, than Manasseh back in the Old Testament days? How's that any different than the Mayans? When human sacrifice becomes, quote, norm. And let me tell you again, what's going underground may be exceeding Mayan ritual human sacrifice. Uh, exceeding the ancient, uh, well, the Babylonian, the uh, Moabites, the, uh, the Nephilim structures around the world where human sacrifice uh, was done again and again. Now, for the Russians, because of the communist, listen, the, the atheism that was in communism really left the nation dry. There was a gripping of old Russian orthodoxy, but listen, millions and millions and millions of Russians simply were empty spiritually, uh, struggling in the collapse of old Russia, and uh, the doors opening up. It's not just that Christian ministry went in there, but the unprecedented growth of Satanism, Russia's own open arms to the Nazi scientists that brought the mind control splitting and the development of uh, programmed assassins. Uh, all of that underground stuff went into Russia, throughout Europe, into Britain, United States, in the 40s, developing broadly in the 50s, and is the um, really the mainstay of all these places. They really are. So as you're listening tonight, and you're wondering about all of this. You might be sitting there at the, uh, well, I mean, you might be um, sitting literally at a table, maybe in a chair. See, I, I, I think about this early in the day during my prayer time. I, I um, you got to understand it's emotional because I've seen the, the, the not only the slides and all the rest of it, but we've dealt with victims for 25 years. I have seen the devastating effects of um, the splitting of the human core, developing subpersonalities, creation of program parts, open to the de demonic side. I've seen uh, so many cult loyal subpersonalities. I've seen this underground. It is incredible. We've engaged, you know, and been engaged and come after numerous times. Now, it's another thing to hear about it, learn about it, be alarmed. And I get a lot of emails lately, and I want to say thank you because there are those that have written to me and said, Lord, you know, Russ, uh, we just want to really say this is, uh, we, thank you for telling us. Thank you for bringing the information. Uh, we're shocked. We're alarmed. On the one hand, there are those, even Christians, that will say, I don't want to hear about it. You know, and... Uh, so that also shuts off the door of uh, listening to what God says about it. Go again to Ezekiel chapter 8. See what God led Ezekiel, an obedient, um, willing servant, to do. Take a read of Acts chapter 8 to see what Philip would do. Look at biblical prophecy in the book of Revelation, and I'm going to tell you that um, satanic rituals will grow on a scale, you know, literally off the charts that the engagement of demonic worship direct and the forced and guided spiritually uh, guided worship of the coming Antichrist, which would be Satan in human skin, homo satanus, then you're dealing with the broadest forms of direct satanic worship, possession, 
manifestation in all of history. And listen, that's biblical prophecy that we day by day by day are moving in and getting, uh, you know, we're, we're actually seeing the rise, the development, the it's all happening. It's all happening. Well, I've got a few other things to share with you concerning some of these uh, cases. And uh, I can look at the European side of it all through um, Germany. Uh, again, where the hotline was developed. I mean, where the hotline was developed. And there's so many calls came in, they, they had to shut it down. They couldn't even handle it. They got to like 130, 140 cases out of thousands of calls. What about this one? What about this? Uh, and, and there's numerous uh, agencies that put it out and, and then put it out again concerning Russia. And uh, that uh, literally the country's uh, head of uh, the country's head of national security. Now listen to what I say. Of national security claimed that the rise of Satanism and its um, d attempt to infiltrate military and uh, police stations, its entire development is a threat. I want you to hear this. A threat, this is coming from their own government, a threat to their national security more than Islamic terrorism. That's the report out of Russia. I don't know if you understand, uh, to me, that is amazing that Russia gives these kind of reports. And I'm going to tell you right now, we are only touching, we are only touching the tip of the iceberg. We're going to go over the fact that in the United States, and this may be true in all of Europe and England and um, most likely Canada and Australia, that the development of underground, transnational, multi-generational, real Luciferic bloodline, you know, the real stuff. I mean, millions of uh, New Agers and coast-to-coast uh, -coast listeners have heard clearly that there's a belief of a shadow government, of a coming uh, globalism and a, and a secret group out there. Biblically, that is true. It's predicted the rise of Antichrist and, listen, it's one thing. Antichrist cannot, will not, you know, arrive visibly to the world, the apocalypse, uh, visibly to the world by himself. You are talking about a regime. All the biblical revelation in Daniel and the rest deals with the beast and the beast kingdom. Uh, it talks about the uh, connection of the most massive politically, economically, militarily, and spiritually joined regimes. So you, you've got to know right now that the shadow government or uh, the people behind the scenes, I think, again, those that have infiltrated deep within this, the Catholic Church, the Vatican, throughout you know the military systems, throughout the political systems, um, you've got those that are the elitists, but then you've got those that are doing the rituals that bring the power that fuels its development. Then you've got those that are being used as the, as the troops. In your cities, I'm talking to Americans now, Every one of your cities has individuals satanically, richly abused. I'm going to give you astounding facts on the numbers. They will blow your mind. But they should also engage us, should outrage us on the one hand. Listen, does anybody get outraged by any information any longer? Does anybody get out? Listen, does the emotions last just for a moment? Do we do nothing concerning it? What about our calling? What about walking with God? What about God's hand, God's power, God's healing, God's involvement in all of this? What about your knowledge of spiritual warfare? What about your ability to stand up and do something about what is going on in your city? Now, listen, here's the, I'm going to give you five reasons why. Five reasons why. Number one, because they are here. And I'm talking about the covens, the priests, priestesses, those serving, not only the robes, but again, the babies being born. Four 
almost now to the level of five literal generations. There are those in their 70s up to 80s in this satanic ritual abuse scheme. There are the first wave 50-year-olds, and then their children, their children, and now down to the 8, 9, 10, 11-year-olds. They're here. The covens are there. Just like in Ezekiel Day, it was there. All along, it was there. Just because nobody knows. Listen, this is beyond the drug realms. This is beyond the mafia. This is beyond the drug lords. This is the, I mean, what is Satan's baby? What is Satan's number one, you know, platform? But this regime that I'm talking about. That they know the powers, have the powers, know how to summon the powers, know where to infiltrate. They know that a coming coup, a coming black awakening, a coming chaos, a goal to usurp everything and take over is coming. They are here. They're in your cities. Catholics deeply, massively infiltrated in that mix of uh, Christendom, political empire, uh, syncretism, and all the rest. All the churches you know, throughout the United States, I'm telling you that there's been infiltration, damage. I'm telling you about the victims, let alone the popular, the traditional, and many other forms. They are are here. And they're listening tonight. And they download these sessions and sometimes they'll send them to me or send me a note. That's right. Now there'll be some that'll listen. They won't they won't contact at all. They fear that too much. There's some that have sent me uh mail at the P.O. box. No return. There are those that have wanted to meet at the side of a lake and talk. Those who wanted to meet deep in a wooded area and talk. There are those that have brought confiscated materials. And there's a team that I know of that goes into the that goes after all of this, continues to pursue, like the spies in the Old Testament. They understand the power of prayer, the warfare needed, and the need to go in. Oh, yeah, counter-infiltration into the Catholic Church, into the areas, hunting the sites, looking and praying for the victims, praying against the powers. They are here in the hugest numbers beyond your imagination. Secondly, they are harming. The millions of victims already listed in the psych wards, hospitals, counseling centers, you have any idea of the ritual abuse they've gone through? I've got ritually abused individuals that are still being controlled by local coven handlers and so forth that are begging us to get them out. Begging us. I'll be in another neighboring state next week. I'll be uh, engaging individuals, coven areas, perpetrators, victims, all of that in a three-day weekend. Oh, I'm going to give you a report about it. But there's harm. There is psychological, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical. It's all there. Millions. And I want to say to the victims right now, I simply pray for an extraordinary miracle of healing, salvation, redemption, flowing to you right now, even later listening to archives in the name of Jesus, that just simply His power, grace, and authority be exercised to deliver you. Lord Jesus, deliver them, crush the demonic realms, deliver them, free them, give them extraordinary. Look in the book of Acts, my friends. See how even angels were sent to uh, unlock chains, open doors, and bring Peter and others out. May God do all that is necessary to bring victims out of Bohemian Grove. And we ask that God would give you the great courage to begin to tell and to bring out. And listen, all believers, pray for uncontested evidences too. I can guarantee you this, that if you uh, begin to look through the course that we're offering free, if you take the series Dark Rituals, Dark Powers, and begin to practice what we, what we teach there in your city, in your area, 
I guarantee you, you'll find victims. You'll see the harm. You'll see the blood and guts of it all. You'll engage, and you'll see the hand of God. Number three, the growth is enormous in the last 30 years, and it's only going to double and triple in even faster ways. The development is so broad and so wide. Anybody working in satanic ritual abuse talking about the victims you've dealt with? Well, listen, mostly everybody's talking about the 49-year-olds and the 55-year-olds. But what about their, their daughters and sons uh, that are in their 30s and their daughters and sons and the new fourth level that's already out there of 8-year-olds, 10-year-olds, and 11-year-olds and the ones that are being born, the babies now. It's off the charts into the millions. It's in Russia, Europe, England, Scandinavian nations, thickly in the United States. You know why? They want the United States. Number four, the agenda. They want the governments. They want the military. They want the economics. They want it. Globalism is coming, but it is luciferic. I don't care how they paint it. I don't care how they, they design it. I don't care if they say it's going to save the world, save the environment, save economics. They're creating the problems that they will claim they will fix only to hook the world. Number five, biblical prophecy tells us it is all coming. That's clear. Biblical prophecy is clear. It is all around us developing. And I would say that two things you got to remember, as far as covens and the underground and what we're talking about, the physical laws of secrecy are in place with them. But the supernatural secrecy is even stronger. Not the drug lords, not the mafia, not, uh, not uh, you know, criminals underground and so forth, not even the CIA. No, the, the number one place of secrecy is where the blanketing and layering of literal satanic powers cover what it is they're doing. And the only way to break in, study Ezekiel 8. It is going to be God breaking in to the reality. The proof is in the pudding. But you launch out with leaders and workers and prayer warriors and witnesses, soul-winning witnesses and those who are willing to help bring victims to Christ, anyone to Christ, and bring to them the healing and the deliverance that's needed. We need individuals that will take a stand. So I went out today. And this happens a lot. People ask me about certain movies. So I went out today and saw the movie Case 39. Case 39, what's it all about? Well, it's about a family with a child, and it looks like they're an abusive family. They're going to try to kill the child. A social worker or a counselor gets involved. Uh, they think it's the parents' fault at first. They get the little girl out. The little girl is as sweet as, as uh, apple pie. Well... That's what it looks like on the outside, but later on, it's very clear that something dark and sinister is on the inside that leads uh, to the deaths of others. It is kind of bizarre, and let me tell you something. There's very uh, real glimpses. I can tell you right now, anybody that has been working in satanic ritual abuse down to the ages now, the fourth generation, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, ten-year-olds, well, this is going to strike you. It brought me to tears to see the movie because I know of cases real cases, not the movies, of um, events very similar. Children showing up as foster children, and it's found out later that they have many sub-personalities, demonized, programmed, and they know, they know ancient languages. They know how to do rituals. They know how to summon the demons. Into the fourth generation. The numbers I give you tonight, 500 million. The numbers I give you tonight, 4 to 10 million, SRA, MPD. Well, it may be off the charts. It may really be 50 million or more in the United States alone. The stats may be now, according to Colin Ross, Canadian psychiatrist, wrote the book called Project Bluebird, subtitled The Purposeful Creation of Multiple Personality Disorder. Now, he goes over all the facts of the CIA and the psychiatrists and the doctors and the foundations, money-wise, and all this is involved. But he agrees with an assessment in the book that there may be, and this is a book maybe five years ago, 
There may be up to 10 million cases. I've got to ask the question tonight. You and I've got to ask this question tonight. If there are 10 million cases of those who have been purposely split and sub-personalities created and demonized and using for a uh, very dark agenda, well then, let's ask the other question. Why so many? One more question. Who did this? Someone called me last week and said, there's one of those individuals here at the church tonight, and they're targeting me, and they've come and they named the area they came from, where four others came from, where a watcher has come from in our area taking pictures of our house. So I mentioned to them that if you've got somebody there that's on assignment to infiltrate, to observe you, to bring some chaos there, then it means that probably the coven's already been there. It means that it's already been observed, and they're there for a reason. And uh, once that is known, once we do what we need to do, like in Acts chapter 5, or like with Paul later on in the, in the book of Acts, when, uh, when a Jewish sorcerer was trying to pervert the right ways of the Lord, well, the hand of God came and demonstrated an incredible public power encounter. And let me just simply say it this way. May God do that even tonight. May God do that in the midst of wherever this is downloaded and listened to. May the authority of Christ, the grace of Christ, uh, may God's hand be outstretched to show incredible sign, wonder, and power encounter that comes from Him. May the Lord Jesus crush the demonic and uh, open the eyes of uh, even perpetrators to the authority and power and wonder and warning and warning of Almighty God. Some of you that have never heard of SRA, it means Satanic Ritual Abuse, MPD, Multiple Personality Disorder. Now it's called DID. You can look it up in the DSM-3, DSM-4, the Diagnostic Manual for the American Psychological Association. It's kind of their Bible on diagnosis and uh, basic treatments. Uh, There's tons of books. I've tried to read every single one that's ever been out there. I've tried to be at every conference in the last 20 years. I've tried to learn and listen. There's good stuff. There's... Uh, disinformation. There's one manual out on the web. Massive disinformation. So uh, maybe we'll do a, a, a deep report on that later on. Now I gave you the terms SRA, Satanic Ritual Abuse, MPD, Multiple Personality Disorder. That, In other words, it involves people who have had their, their solical side, their personality split again and again and again, sub-personalities, alters. Now for the psychiatrist out there and the psychologist Your field should know this very well. 1947, a book is published, G.H. Estabrooks. In his chapter on the weaponization of this process, he declares very clearly that they have learned how to create subpersonalities in soldiers, creating assassins, spies, reconnaissance agents, disinformation agents, on and on and on. Back in 1947, that book was released. You can look at Dr. Cameron out of Canada. You can look at Dr. Wynn, uh, Dr. Orn, rather, and uh, also Dr. Jolly West. You can look at Gottlieb. You can look at uh, MK Ultra. You can look at all of these factors. But here's what I know. Listening right now are victims who have never come forward. Listening right now are those who recon the information we bring out. Listening right now in a providential way may be those whom God grips for getting involved in a broader way. Let me say this, the 1970s, they began to show up in psych wards and counseling centers. They were diagnosed schizophrenics in the beginning, but they weren't. They didn't just have delusion. They had separate sub-personalities, more than one, sometimes 10, sometimes 20. Later, they're finding 50 or 100 or 200 subpersonalities. Personalities that were distinctly trained or program trained 
uh, to be a um, sexual slave and, and someone who can uh, use uh, their sexual prowess uh, to bring compromise. There's assassins, there's runners, there's informers, there's every kind. Uh, there's those on the inside that have been empowered demonically. They can astral project, they can remote view, they can do all kinds of things. They have a connection. They uh, know how to do satanic ritual warfare on the inside. The upfront person may not know a thing. We call that them being intact because they're created so that the front person doesn't know what they really are. Though they miss time, though they go to rituals, though they do their assignments, though they're placed in government, law enforcement, uh, in uh, military, in churches everywhere, the reason they are placed there by the hundreds of thousands is for what's about to come. In the 80s, the reports were there were thousands and then hundreds of thousands. In the early 90s, Centennial Hospital in Denver, Holly Hector reported uh, uh, statistics of 2.4 million cases, with the majority being satanic, richly abused cases. Now, that was probably a fourth of what was really out there. Later on, Colin Ross, as I say, agrees with the assessment 10 million. We've lowered the scale. Somebody say at least 4.5 million diagnosed cases where they've gone to the psych wards and to the counseling centers and the places to where they've been marked down. Well, marked down is DID, MPD, and or SRA. But half the people we've worked with have never been to a psych ward, never been diagnosed outside in a secular institution. So the numbers of those that were coming that were in their 40s, well, you know, 20 years ago in their 30s, those folks that began to show up in the 80s and 90s, well, now they're in their 50s. And before they knew it, they were, you know, they were having children back there 20, 30 years ago. And what's been found out is that their children uh, have become multiples also that have subpersonalities, demonized, programmed, and that those in their 30s have had children also that may be earlier, well, 23, 24, 25. And then what we found out is that untouched, undealt with, this generational bloodline, this agenda moves down and has moved down to that fourth generation. If we want to say that there are, after the 70s, 80s, and 90s, the millions, 2010, if the statistics really hold, even if we were to say 5 million total, I, I believe it's 10 million or more, but if we were to say 5 million that are in their 50s, well, then they had children, and then they had children, and now they've had children that are... 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, there is a fourth generation. What this means is the 4 or 5 million have had 4 or 5 million, and they have had 4 or 5 million, and they now have had 4 or 5 million. The insurance industry has uh, poured out, shelled out millions of dollars in care. And if um, a victim has a spouse that has insurance, like a federal officer that we knew, and the wife that was one of the most powerful ones out of Germany, out of roots in Germany, now they went, they were sent to a hospital 21 days when the insurance ran out, thousands and thousands of dollars, then they were booted out. That's how it works. I've worked with a number of people that contacted me, their insurance um uh, only goes so far, and uh, then they, they have to leave. I, I noticed in our area, every single psych ward we've been to to visit what they have termed, deep down inside, they've called chosen ones, or, um, again, created to be uh, used in the satanic agenda, whatever terminology. Some have called them BWBs. Some have called them other titles. Some listening might feel that they're really advanced. Uh, and uh, But we're only talking right now the United States. Add in Australia. Add in Canada. Add in the U.K. And then add in Europe. 
what do we have, 20 million in Europe in their 50s? And their children and their children and their children. What about Russia, where it's been found evident all over? I'm going to say that the highest statistic, if you take all four generations, the 58-year-old, their children, and then those children's children, all the way down to the 8, 9, 10-year-olds. If you add in Russia and Europe, Scandinavian countries, England, United States, Canada, Australia. If you add in all of these, and if you go down to South America, to Paraguay, or to the colony of Dignidad, if you go to some of the other outposts, or to Italy in the Vatican, if you go across all these realms, let me tell you what, the high numbers, the high numbers could be over a hundred million individuals who from birth by spiritual design with the goals of genetic manipulation, spiritually also, uh, being split, being programmed, being demonized, being raised, being trained, being used again and again and again, being used to breed, then we're talking well over a hundred million or more in the entire project. Now hang on to your seats. And when I say a hundred million or more, I want to bring it back to the United States. Let's chop it down to five. Let's just chop it down to five million cases. And I apologize to all victims because uh, we surely do not want to um, underestimate how broad and wide. But I think the psychologist, I think those who understand the statistics on this issue, when you then go through the implications of one individual baby being born by spiritual design, maybe even by breeder, the child is born already dissociated, uh, the constant dissociation, creating of subparts, the bonding, the programming, the demonization, uh, the marriage to the beast, uh, the, all the way. Listen, let's take it all the way to 13. One. You ask any counselor, any psychiatrist, anyone working with a real satanic, ritually abused person, you can ask them, how many rituals did you go through when you were 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13? Let's just say by the time they're 15, this may be a very low number, year by year by year they may have gone through uh, 1,500. They may have gone through, let's just say, 1,000. As a matter of fact, we can uh, take it down lower if you want. And if we say that there are 5 million cases of satanic ritual abuse, and then you times that by the rituals, let's just say they've gone through 100, not 1,000, which would be the norm. If you simply say one individual... Oh, by the time they're 15, they've only gone through 100 rituals. Where the demons are summoned, where blood is shed, animal and human, where sexual rituals are done, where ancient books are opened, where they've been in the atmosphere of the demonic, they know. They know the sounds, the smells, the fears, the chants. They know it all. So if we try to whittle it way down and say, well, they've only gone through 100, and there's only 5 million of them, well, that's easy that's 500 million satanic rituals in the United States alone. If you then take it to a thousand rituals each, and then if you now go global and say, you know what, there must be, there must be a hundred million of these kind of victims. You times 100 million and a thousand rituals each over the last 50 years. I am telling you that the rituals being done from the 40s on, broadly in the agenda, the 50s on, 
that it is literally off the charts. Whether it's in France or Germany or Spain or Scotland or Ireland or England. Whether it's Norway or Sweden, Finland or the Czech Republic. Whether it's in Moscow or Los Angeles. Whether it's in Toronto or whether it's down under in Australia. I'm saying that, uh, and listen, counselors out there, you do the stats on this, really. When you go all four generations, not just those in the 50s, not just those that are in their late 30s, not just those in the mid-20s, but their children. Four generations. I've got one family where it, they're in every case. The late 50-year-old, that daughter, the next children down, and now they've got eight, nine, ten-year-olds. Eight, nine, ten-year-olds are showing up all over the place. Multiple. Multiple. Everywhere. That's how the agenda works. It's done within their breeding ground. It's done within their family bloodline. It's done within the system. Ancient brotherhood, brotherhood, Illuminati, whatever you want to call it. What I'm telling you right now is that at the lowest figure I can give Americans in 30, 40 years, 500 million rituals that involve blood, human sacrifice, animal sacrifice, the summoning of demons, bringing the dark side from their side to this side, bringing them into human bodies, and then also summoning them, releasing them in the air against and towards government, military, law enforcement, and used in ritual warfare to attack and infiltrate and bring harm to the church. I don't know if all those who are really um, complaining about the weakness of the American church understand that, it's, that, that the warfare is not flesh or blood. Ephesians 6. What did and does the Holy Spirit say. You can read the prophetic, you can read the words of Jesus, Matthew 24. You can read in the future when God is engaging Luciferic globalism, his report in the future is that the billions won't get up. They're not going to give up their de direct demon worship, magic arts. It's going to be maybe in the billions the mark is taken. And the mother, of all, the mother of all rituals, ritual warfare, ritual sending of demons, there's the clue, there's the picture of what's being done on lower scales now. Revelation 16 will show it to you. Talk about it being biblical. Talk about uh, living in the trenches with it, in your home, in their homes, out in the fields, engaging perpetrators. So may I say to Americans, may I say to Canadians, may I say to the Aussies, may I say across the board when you're listening to this in your downloads, church leaders, and I want to say especially to those in Roma, to those in the religious structure of the Catholic system, you have been highly, since the 40s, deeply, Broadly infiltrated. Lucifer's Lodge, written by a Catholic, telling on the Catholic issue of satanic ritual abuse in the system. So I'm telling you right now that this month, with the basic listing of rituals and all that is going on across the nation, that literally hundreds of thousands of rituals will be going on that in a collective sense, October 30th and 31st, November 1st through the 4th, rituals will be going on in Russia, throughout Europe, England, Canada, Australia, United States, by the hundreds of thousands, the hundreds of thousands. Can I say it again? The hundreds of thousands. 
If any believer is listening to me now, you understand Acts chapter 4, when the body of Christ was together, they raised their voices together uh, in prayer to God, seeking God to grant boldness. Power was manifested and released. They were all filled with the Spirit again. The building physically shook because the power of God, spiritual power manifested, literally affected the physical building even. And all the believers went out soul winning and sharing Christ, and God demonstrated his presence in his kingdom. The laws of engagement for the other side are the same. Think in terms of a ritual being a prayer meeting, where they are summoning and seeking powers, and those powers are wanting them to do this to accomplish the will of Satan. Christians, do you understand that God has his will? The will of God, good, pleasing, and perfect, Romans chapter 12, right? I understand that. I love being in the will of God. I want to be right there in the will of God. Why? There's nothing higher. There's nothing higher. It's good. It's pleasing. It's perfect. It's about God's redemption, God's will that none should perish, God's will that all, uh, pos anthropos, second chapter, Timothy, as we pray for lost souls, this is good. And pleases God our Savior, who wills that all, pos, anthropos, all humanity, would be. That's what God's after. And when believers are praying, power's coming, power's released. If you don't pray, there's no answers. The way it works is ask and you will receive, seek and you will find. If you don't ask, nothing's going to be received. If you don't seek, nothing is going to be found. If you don't knock, no doors will be opened. In Acts chapter 4, they correctly, in quoting Scripture and led by the Spirit of God, they prayed that God would stretch out His hand. That's what I did prior to this broadcast. That's what I did concerning all the possible listeners, all those who would download later. All those who would be engaged. God, stretch out your hand to save, to heal, to deliver. Stretch out your hand to crush, in the name of Jesus, the dark powers. Stretch out your hands to strike churches and believers with great revival. Let the Spirit of God fall. May the hand of God be stretched out to do this. I read in 1 John chapter 5 that this is the confidence, the assurance we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He, hoida, listen, akuo, he, he hears us. That's the word akuo, He hears us, He hearkens. And if we know that He hears us, then we know. That's the word hoida. We factually know that we have the requests. To stand with confidence in praying for souls. To stand in confidence to pray for believers to be filled with the Spirit of God. To stand in confidence to pray against dark powers using the authority of Jesus. Do you pray with confidence? Do you pray with any demonstrative effect? If you're asking, is there any answers? If you're seeking, have you found? If you're knocking, are doors opened? That's what it's all about. So that in this Thursday night in this series, I'm just simply sounding the alarm. I understand that eventually hundreds of thousands will hear live and downloaded later on. I know it will be passed along to others. I know that others will monitor it. And for each one in advance, before you've gotten to this portion, 42 minutes in, I have asked that God would engage you according to who you are, where you are. More than anything else, moving in my heart is simply this message, that God loves you, that Jesus did literally die and rise from the dead. Every demon in hell knows this. And he's alive. 2,000 years later, that Christ is the one dwelling in me for 30 some, 35, 36 years now. This is why I'm here. This is why I would go to a stupid movie, Case 39, sit there with two other people in the entire thing, just to do it as research, to take a look at what they're doing, and, and see some of the similarities of cases I know. You know what those cases are? I can name them. 
I can name the girls. I can name the boys. I can name the sub-personalities. I can name perpetrators. God is not willing that anyone be lost. And any Satanist victim, perpetrator listening now, you know very well from what we've said here, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus, the blood of Christ, if we say Yahweh Adonai, Isaiah 6, then your demons know. You should know as they shudder and want you to shut everything off that it is the infinite authority and power of God. Judgment Day is coming for them. Uh, there's going to be a day, you read about it, Revelation 19, 20. You know, if you stay with this globalism, if you become one of their soldiers, Revelation 20, uh, 19, chapter 19, verse 20, I'm telling you right now, is your destiny. How many years away? I don't know. Ten? Eight? I don't know. Armageddon is not a manufactured, a man-made, manufactured, false flag thing. It is a long, sought-after spiritual quest by the fallen cherub, and God shows us already in the future that he gets there. Armageddon hasn't occurred, but it will. Armageddon will have most likely millions and millions of soldiers on the field. The black awakening, the chaos that will collapse society and governments, economic systems, bring enormous violence and kill millions. Well, that will come before the hidden regime and the Antichrist, in the dust of it all, rises to act like the Savior of the earth, Savior of the nations, Savior of humanity. The greatest deceit in human history is just upon us. God shows in biblical prophecy that the greatest destruction by the billions of humanity will be lost. Here's your opportunity. I'm telling you, proclaiming to you unashamedly with love in my heart to you, God loves you. God summons you. Repent now. Turn to the living Christ. Receive him as Lord, Savior, Receive him. Renounce the demonic. Renounce the dark side. Renounce the demons. Renounce the agenda. Renounce it all. Open wide to the living Christ. Psalm 81, 10. Every believer, let me say one of the reasons for this tonight. Well, it's the alert. It's giving you the stats at the lowest possible figure. And the lowest possible figure I'm going to even allow myself to give is 500 million satanic rituals. Someone says, well, I haven't really seen them. Well, you haven't been to the police you know, academy where I saw hundreds of slides. You haven't maybe worked for 25 years with victims, and you haven't been willing to go out to the ritual fields and see the places. You haven't been at the... Uh, at, at the at the chair next to the father whose daughter was ritually ripped apart as a 14-year-old and left in a field after she was used. See, for every case, 39, case 38, case 37, for me, case 312, for every case, it's a human being. Valued by God so much that God would come in human flesh and die for them on a cross. For the perpetrators, you are damned, you are doomed, you are, uh, your time is about up, and I can just appeal to you as Saul of Tarshish went out breathing murderous threats, maybe God would engage you, and I pray that he will not let you alone, either, either save you or do whatever it takes to stop you. For the believers listening tonight, on the website shatterthedarkness.net, there is um, a series, well, there's Confronting the Powers to the Left, an entire course. There's one that we're developing called Powerful in Prayer. There's one called Dark Rituals, Dark Powers. If you want to really begin to meet the victims, engage the covens, learn more about all of it in an experiential way, that series, including helping police officers, already has about 14 hours. We might add a few more. Dark Rituals, Dark Powers, it's all there for the training 
And it's absolutely free. All you got to do is download it and listen. But be ready for God to engage you. Be ready for God to um, speak to your heart, speak to your life. Can I say tonight that one of the uh, things that I want to say is for you to engage the statistics. In your city, and here's what we found. And I'm going to tell you right now, you can check it out. You can go to the psych wards in your city, whoever you might know, wherever you can find access, and say, uh, hey, have you had those who are multiple personality disorder here? Do you have those who are, have been uh, reportedly uh, satanic, ritually abused? I know in our smaller city, every psych ward had them, still do. That's true across the nation. And what we found, we haven't been to every city, but we've been doing these things called REAP trips, R-E-E-P. Research, exposure, evangelism, prayer. Over the years, probably about 60 different cities. I'll be out into another state this next week. We have other folks coming in this week. But next weekend, three days out into another state. We'll be to um, the home of those who've been trying to help victims. We'll be engaging possibly parents, a third generation set of parents that are unhealed, part of the coven. And they had children that are multiple, demonized, and um, doing horrifically. Their lives have been stolen. For you who have had a life of some kind of, you know, bad things, you're okay. A lot of us have been raised, we had our bicycles, we lived, you know, in the in the late 50s and 60s and so forth, and, you know, here you are listening now. May God heal all your wounds, but may you also get up out of your seat and whatever your age, be used of God in the most powerful way possible. Tonight, maybe, later on tonight, I've had a hamburger earlier, I'll probably have some kind of meal. If I pay for a meal, say you go out somewhere and you pay $10 for a meal. They lay it out before you. So I put my fork out and I grab one um, green bean and I eat it and I push the rest of the plate away. I pay my $10. I give my uh, $2 of tip. Is that what I'm going to do? Am I going to pay and then eat one green bean off a plate that has chicken and mashed potatoes and bread? No. I'm going to go out there and, like me, probably eat everything on the plate. A lot of Christians, they have a plate that is really literally the the plate of grace, the plate of mercy that came out of heaven. There we are in Christ with power and grace and might, spiritual gifts, all the workings of God, the pledge of the inseparable, unbroken, uh, never-failing presence of God. I will be with you always to the very end of the age. That's what Jesus said in the midst of the mission. But so many Christians, they've taken one little green bean off that place, that plate of grace. So they've, they've taken one little bit. So many Christians, that's all they've got is one little bit, one little bite. Maybe 30 years have gone by and you haven't done anything with your spiritual life and you think your spiritual life is a wreck. You think your spiritual life is weak. Well, it is. Paul says in the third chapter of the book of Philippians, I take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Christ Jesus has taken hold of you and forgave you and freed you and gave you his presence, his power, the gift of eternal life, given you his very personal, all the promises, the word of God. You could grow, you could become so strong, you could become so fruitful. You read what Jesus said in John 15. You read it. No, you read it. He chose you to go bear fruit, much fruit, fruit that will last. You read John 15, see what it's all about. Why don't you decide tonight, as a believer in Christ, 
because of what Christ has done for you, because of what the mission of God is all about, because of the cross, because of the ugly, horrific, radical rise of evil, that you will surrender your life to Jesus Christ, that you will open wide to God in such a way that you will be willing to grow and become the most powerful witness, the most powerful prayer warrior, the most fearless individual that you can possibly become in Christ. How do you do that? Well, it all begins with surrender. It all begins with you surrendering the totality of your life. Is Jesus Lord or are you Lord? And when you surrender all to Christ and open up wide to Jesus, repenting of all sins, uh, releasing all the past issues, asking God to cleanse you, asking God to heal you up, asking God to fill you, clothe you afresh with the Spirit of God, then you rise to be dedicated to the Word of God and put it into practice. What good is it if you don't put it into practice? James 1 says, well, for you, you only self, it's self-deceit. If you don't put it into practice, it's no good for you. It's good for anyone that does put it into practice. You can become so strong. You can become so powerful. I don't care if you're sitting there crying. I don't care if you're sitting there feeling like you're some kind of drunk, some kind of idiot. I don't care. If you if you say you've accepted Jesus Christ, you may have pushed him back. You may have grieved the Spirit of God, but the Spirit of God now speaks to you. Stop it. Stop it. And get up. Surrender your life to the living Christ. Ask Him to fill your life, cleanse your life, repent of it all, and uh, let Him clothe you with the Spirit of God in a fire. And stand up to dedicate day after day after day after day and be persistent until you're really consistent with it all. Until you see yourself growing. Acts 9.22, after Saul of Tarshish, the evil anti-Christian guy, you know, uh, after he gets saved, after he gets filled with the Spirit, he begins to do the work, the mission. Acts 9.22, it says, then he began to grow more and more powerful. Dear Christian, whether in uh, Europe, Russia, all through the areas, Canada, Australia, or the United States, Most likely in every psych ward, in every city, you'll find someone who's been satanically, richly abused from being, from birth on. That they have been really, really messed up. Transmuted is the good word. It's bad, but that's the word that explains it. And if you find one victim in your city, that means there's probably 10, 20, 30, or 100 more. And if you find a victim that's in their 50s, there's probably the next generation, the next generation, and then there's eight, nine. Social workers know this. People down there in the children's service, they know this. Little kids with sub-personalities, demonized, completely controlled by those above them. America, you have millions of them. Europe, you have millions upon millions of them. And at some point, without getting freedom, without getting deliverance, without getting healing, at some point they could be used when the global activation for the Great Revolt, the Black Awakening, and the cause behind the rise of Antichrist. See, they say they are the troops of Antichrist. We have an alert line and a phone number, 330-470-1303. You can call that number to report about satanic ritual abuse, covens. I'm just saying you can call anonymously. Nobody's going to answer. Nobody will call you back. Nobody's going to bother you. But call, and and this is like a whistleblower number, 330-470-1303. I was knocking on the door of a house I'd I'd never been inside before, but this is where they told me the young man was. I'd been searching for him for a... Two or three days, I'd talked to him. I knew he was depressed, but he was also a runaway. Now, I have heard the stories that many others, uh, young people in the area, they were all living somewhere together with a lady that was a priestess that was involving them in all kinds of sexual perversions and satanic rituals. As the door opened, I had no idea that it would be the owner on the other side. He um, He had come to clean up. He wanted to know who I was, so I shared with him, and he let me come in. 
the entire place was um, in shambles. He had given the orders for all the people living there to vacate two days prior. On every wall, there was satanic uh, literature, backwards words, uh, ritual statements, upside-down crosses, pentagrams. The Humane Society came in because downstairs, where they tore the, um, well, they tore the stairway out that was going downstairs. There was blood everywhere. Animal, human, sacrifice, nobody knows for sure about the human but without question, the animal uh, sacrifice was done numerous times. Now, most of the kids were probably um, 14, 15, 16, maybe 17. Every single wall in the house, every single floor, every single doorway, even the refrigerator and stove had markings everywhere. All of these runaways had gotten together, and over time, a, a priestess, had led them into this satanic worship, sexual rituals, blood rituals. And um, we finally, you know, found the place, and we were a day late. Mitch was gone. All the kids were gone. We were trying to hunt down the priestess. The man had no idea what was going on inside the house that he was renting out. No idea that rituals were being done in the basement. No idea that all the walls, no idea that 20, 24, 25 kids were all gathering and practicing dark arts, magic arts, satanic rituals. A couple of days later, I got the call. Mitch was found. He found his way back home. Whatever happened, whatever influence, whatever gripped him. He took his father's gun, put it in his mouth, in his bedroom, and pulled the trigger. Half of his head was on the wall. The other half with his body fell to the ground. At 17 years old, the last time I saw him on the streets running, giving me the goat's head sign, Not sure what part the rituals played in all of it, but there is no question influence occurred. This was in a normal town, uh, any town USA. And this is one of the places over the years that we've engaged. It's a boy that was in my car one time as I tried to share Christ in the midst of his anger and hatred. Right here in Kenmore, Ohio. That's where it happened. Little boy stolen out of Allentown, Pennsylvania. I told you the story about the woman from Oregon that came in out of nowhere, other than that we've been praying for the answers. Maybe our prayers, and I do believe that's what occurred, God brought the woman back from Oregon here and somehow connected her to us. God is amazing at that. And told us the story of what occurred, all that occurred, took us to the building. Now we've asked law enforcement, how it would be to get in there, since it's uh, boarded up and not used. Coven members that were involved back in the 90s, well, they're still around. Maybe not the couple that stole the boy. But I told you the story about the girl they sexually used, the boy, the little boy with the pink socks that they sacrificed and then ate. Good news. Maybe you've been praying, too. We have found the woman that told us the details, and we're going tonight to visit her again and see about connecting her with detectives and seeing about getting inside that building. Because if there's blood spatter, there's a lot of things that can be found out, a lot of things that can be done. And so may God give you a spirit of great boldness, fearlessness, and growing wisdom. May God give you uh, such a uh, sense of leadership that Esther, that Deborah, that Nehemiah, and that Daniel had in the days that we live. Well, let's ask the question tonight. Why is my voice out here on the radio? And then why do you listen? There's a lot of reasons 
But I believe there's a designated reason. There's a specific reason of both exposure of the dark side in biblical obedience to Ephesians chapter 5. There is um, the sense of uh, the watchman, the idea of um, watching and reporting and saying this is what's going on. There's just simply the side of Bible study. Biblical prophecy tells us the closer we get to the end, uh, the demonic manifestation, the demonic activity uh, will be off the scale, unprecedented in all of history, and manifested in lives and uh, people experiencing. So all I'm going to tell you right now that major, major, major... You can go back to the Crowleys. You, you can go back to Jack Parsons, the rocket scientist. You can think that uh, scientists would not be involved. They are involved. You can think that military people are not involved. They are involved. Because ultimately, backing it all the way up, you fought, you've got a fallen cherub with an insatiable lust, not only to present himself as God, but the ultimate goal of the fallen cherub, mark it down, check me out on this, is Revelation 19.19. The ultimate goal of the fallen cherub and that entire dark side regime, Armageddon. It's all about trying to one more time stop God, annihilate God. You read about it, Revelation 19.19. Bible, the Bible's clear. And if you back up to chapter 16, you're going to see that there's only one way. Military men and women, listen for a moment. With all the weaponry and everything else, please remember, before a, 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 a gun is fired, before any bullet or bomb is released, um, there's thinking going on. And that thinking and maybe waiting for orders and where those orders come from involves a lot of thought and influence and decision making. And I'm going to tell you right now that Satan is... Um, where there is vulnerability, Satan is very powerful in influence. Take a look at Judas, Gospel of John, where in his heart he's already slammed it shut on God and opened it wide to his own selfish greed. The Bible simply says that Satan walked right into him, into him, and guided him out to betray unto the cross, to betray unto death Jesus Christ. I will say very clearly that in these days, keep watching politics, keep watching military structure, keep watching economic structure. Those three areas will have um, Satan's uh, deepest attention. Uh, they are the central targets because of what's coming. There is no globalism without the political ideology without the economic backing, and without the military force. So the globalism that everybody knows is coming. But what most do not understand is that it's all coming from a uh, spiritually guided influence. There is simply no globalism without it. Not in politics, not in military, not in economics. The shadow government, shadow elitists, well, they're definitely there. And I, I, I do agree that you can um, really pray about it, and when God does show up with great power, like in, look at the model of Acts chapter 8. That's a model for me. You take a look at Acts chapter 8, you're going to see a model. And in that model of how it was done, in that model of how it was done, guess what occurs? God's power is so uh, deeply and broadly released that the once high people and low people, that is the upper echelon and then the peasants, that were once captivated and uh, amazed and gripped by a dark power coming through a priest, basically, a deep occultist that literally brought control to the entire region, city, all of that. It is clear that people... Uh, that had been influenced by him were clearly demonized, possessed. Because when Philip went in with the authority of Christ, the message of the gospel, the presence and power and backing of God in heaven, that um, people were saved and healed. But let's, let's look at the story, Acts chapter 8. They were delivered. Demons came out of them screaming. How'd they get in there? 
See, demons cannot, listen, you, you just can't walk down the street and get born again. When God confronts by the Spirit of God, or you hear the gospel and you're, you're not saved, like with me, anybody else I've ever led to Christ, there's got to be an engagement. How can they believe on whom they've not heard? They've got to hear the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes. That's the Word of God, Romans 1.16. And you've got to understand, it's not until you or I um, repent and turn and receive and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that the Spirit of God comes in us, that we are born of the Spirit. You've got to understand that's how it works on the other side, the laws of engagement. There has to be a door. There has to be an agreement. There has to be a right. They have to have a right to get in. Are they knocking? Yes. Are they seeking as never before in all of history? Can I say it again? They are seeking as never before in all of history to fulfill the agenda. And they're doing it furiously. They're doing it because uh, they're pressured. Hell is pressured to get it done. How do I know this? Well, in all the experiences, we find this out. But back to the Bible, back to the Word of God. And you come to um, Revelation 12, where God reveals the full uh, presence of, of uh, the fallen cherub is revealed as God uses the term dragon. The dragon, the ancient serpent, the devil, the dragon, again and again in one chapter. This is, this is the only chapter in all the Bible that does this. Again and again, God reveals the dragon. As a matter of fact, it uses the word megas dracon. Mega meaning huge, massive. The idea now is that the presence of, manifestation of, in comparison to the world, that the full force of the fallen cherub in the sense of dra huge dragon. Well, you read about it there in Revelation 12. He knows that his time is short. And uh, he's furious. He's enraged. The dark side knows that its time is short. Christ is coming. The end of radical evil will be here. All of us that know Christ would, cr would, would cry out, Hallelujah, 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 and again, hallelujah. That's Revelation 19's four hallelujahs in the context of the visible return of Christ. Oh, there's going to be an end. Mankind won't do it. Politicians won't do it. Law enforcement can't do it. We can only uh, give the band-aids because the issue at its roots is spiritual. Your condition, if you're not saved, lost, separated from God, dying in the physical body, what are you going to do about it? You're going to try to save yourself? You're going to grab some New Age crystals? You're going to have somebody channel a spirit for you. Uh, you're going to embrace uh, the teaching, the Luciferic doctrine of a evolution to deity? You know anybody that reached it? You see, on the one side, there are spirits by the hundreds of millions that are guiding and leading and directing, and the Spirit of God said they would come. Check it out, 1 Timothy 4.1. They're going to come in great droves, and the only goal, deceive as many people as possible, and use some of them along the way. Maybe you're listening right now, and you've recognized that you've got spiritual stuff coming in you and through you. You're enhanced. You've got abilities, but none of it comes from God. Let me tell you that it comes from the dark side. I don't care how masqueraded. I don't care how if it, you think it's a, you, Uncle Charlie, if it's an ancient uh, Indian spirit, if it's an animal guide, if it is an ascended master, if it is some alien entity, if it is Maitreya himself, it is demonic, it is from the other side. And when, and when confronted with the authority of the living Christ, the dark side always yields. They know who he is. Oh, you could read about it in the gospel when Jesus came to the one area where there were two of the demonized individuals. The demon cries out, we know who you are. You ever read that? Demonic, unclean spirits. If you've ever engaged them inside another person, that is, they've manifested fully, looking at you through their eyeballs, 
speaking with that human mouth, but you know it's not human. You've got an ancient, God-hating, eternally committed, dark entity dwelling in a human. It has got in, well, maybe through a ritual. Uh, maybe through transference. If there's full possession, it's because somebody gave full rights. They opened up all the way. Maybe they didn't know what was going to fully happen because, listen, when it comes to the dark side, it's not like when God talks about coming to Christ, you receive the gift of God, the Holy Spirit, the gift of eternal life, the presence of God will come in. We were created for the presence of God. Without the presence of God, we're dead. We're lost. And so if you do not have the Spirit of Christ in you, read Romans 8. If you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. But God wants you. And God seeks you. And you're listening tonight. And God summons you to come to the living Christ. He knocks at the door of your heart. He seeks to bring His full uh, redeeming, awesome presence into your life. And all you got to do, you know, bow your knee to God, surrender, repent of the sin. You know, turn your back on all the junk and turn to God and uh, ask the Lord Jesus, come in. I receive you as Lord and Savior. Listen, I want you to know this too on our website. On the left-hand side, scroll down a little bit, you'll find a tab that says Dynamic Discipleship. How do you know what salvation is? What happens at the moment of salvation? How can you grow? Those kind of things are there. If you really want to understand the current day and even the future, then we can look backwards, biblically, at the massive, massive level of um, demonization, demon worship, human sacrifice, rituals, where individuals, families, entire tribes, bloodlined, for years and years and years. I mean, we can take a look at the Mayans. It's uh, one of the um, one of the uh, most untold stories. Most of those listening to the Mayan stories and Mayan researchers today are being lied to about the advanced civilization. They're being utterly absolute. Whether the people that are doing the research are high on the ayahuasca, the drugs, whether they've allowed themselves to be altered by the spirits and spiritualities that helped turn and build a civilization with Nephilim architecture, astral archaeology opening doors celestially to um, uh, an inseparable uh, link an open door to the dark side on the backs of thousands and thousands of human beings, children, moms and dads were sacrificed. They were, they had their guts ripped out. They were burned and melted. They were, they were beheaded. The blood was shed. The temples have blood all over. The grounds are blood soaked. The demons that were once there, they're still waiting for dupes to come along. And um, little by little, like the bait, you know the bait for the big old fat fish out there? To the fat fish, it looks like it's uh, something good. Man, it looks, uh, that's why it's bait. The lure looks good. Remember the third chapter of Genesis? Eve heard all the communication, but it looked good. There's an emotional grip. There's a a grabbing of the senses when dark presence, even masqueraded as light. So you're stepping into the light. So you're talking and pointing to the light. What light are you stepping into? There is the light of God that brings clear revelation. John's Gospel, chapter 1, Jesus Christ is the phos. He is the light coming out of heaven, the fullest revelation. You want to know what God's like? Take a look. But He's the light. That's what the light is. In the New Testament, the light is very clearly, you know, God, the idea of light, uh, phos, this moral, spiritual, infinite qualities are there. 
But when you talk about stepping into the light and letting the light use you or using yourself or the light, what light? If you don't know the name, if you don't know the source, because the Word of God says that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. If you can't name the light you feel you're serving, that's not God's intent. The light that God gives leads you to the living Christ, the sinless one, the one that died, the one that healed, the one that raised people from the dead, the one that's coming again, the one that can change your life from this very second to all of eternity. This is the one that dwells in me. This is the one that I know I will see face to face, God. But when we're dealing with rituals... And the powers that are coming in, and let me, I wanted to say here, I've already done this this week, the number one reason, Satanists will know this, undergrounders know this, and uh, they know that's why they have to have a, a constant human sacrifice. They've got to have they've got to have the humans. Human sacrifice in satanic ritual is the number one way to appease and draw over to open gateways for the dark side to come to this side. To be manifest here. So you can look at it in the past. It's not gone away. It's never been stopped. Let me say this. You can look into the future. I've got the book coming out. Next week we're going to start a series, probably a two-week series called Seeing into the Future. Looking at aspects of actual, factual human history, the way it will really occur. In contrast to some of the other stuff that's out there, we'll look at what will really occur. What will really occur is seen in uh, on a global scale, local scale. It shows in the area of masses of people, nations, and individual pol- politicians and military. It, it shows the abyss. It shows Armageddon. It shows the great anarchy. It shows the Antichrist. It shows what people are saying, what people are feeling, what people are thinking. It even shows way out there into the future those who have loved Jesus, been born of the Spirit of the Lord, and know Him. And when they are glorified, it even shows you seeing God face to face in love, indestructible immortality. So when I say go to the future, I don't need Nostradamus. I don't need Edgar Cayce. I don't need Sylvia Brown. I don't need WebBot. I don't need these. Because, and I don't need the remote viewers because uh, on, a, on a very broad scale, um, uh, there is uh, little accuracy. Some. I don't need the Mayan 2012 prophecies. They're not really prophecies anyway. What I'm going to do in the future here is to reveal to you, they're not really prophecies about the humanity's future. They are Luciferian declarations of their growing agenda. Look to the future, book of Revelation, we'll look at a few places all through. Matter of fact, uh, let's start um, dealing with future, future satanic rituals. Uh, The revealed, number one, let's begin here. Uh, We're going to look at um, Revelation 9, verse 20. Let me just read. Listen carefully to the words, okay? The rest of mankind. Now, I want you to hear this. This has not yet occurred. This is the future. We haven't even had the Antichrist rise or the false prophet here. The great anarchy uh, has not yet occurred. But when the four horses, Revelation 6, when the seals, all these things are going on, even when the wrath of God begins to come, eventually there's a pause, and here's what it says about hundreds of millions worldwide. Listen, in the future. Hundreds of millions. Here's what the Word of God in prophetic um, picture of the future. And the, I'm quoting, quote, And the rest of men, humankind, which were not killed by these plagues, repented not of the works of their hands, that they would not stop worshiping demons. Did you hear that? That they would not stop worshiping that is their complete yielding to embrace of agreement with opening their hearts believing in 
experiencing uh, daimonoia is the Greek word. Daimonoia is the word in reference to the multiplicity of spirits. So the future shows us when the Antichrist comes and the false prophet comes and globalism is here and uh, everything else is suppressed or being fought against. When the war on the saints, uh, Daniel, out of Daniel, the, the, when the Antichrist makes that occur, eventually this picture is that this vast, huge sum of humanity worldwide they are worshiping demons. They're embracing, in manifested uh, fellowship with, connection. And again, the central way is in those rituals. There's only one way to really engage the demons like this, the way the Mayans did. Worldwide, the uh, leading out, the coming out of the underground, and then the embrace of. Why? Because people want powers. People need powers. People want non-human enhancements. People are going to be used and guided. As a matter of fact, when demons get into one person, usually you know what happens? They want more. They want to guide the person. We've seen this happen again and again. Even when they get into a young child through satanic ritual abuse, even if that child is taken away, if the demonic is not dealt with inside, the demonic will seek uh, some connection along the way to get more demons in. And even an eight-year-old can draw a circle, can do a ritual and summon a demon if they've been involved in it again and again, and if they're empowered. You see, as a believer in Christ, I have the Spirit of God. Before the show tonight, I'm upstairs in the place that I stand and pray, and as I you know, have my arms raised to the heavens, the Spirit of God is in me. I'm praying for God to stretch out His hand. I'm praying for the Spirit of God to lead me and guide me and direct me and grant uh, those that are listening to be saved or healed or delivered. I'm in fellowship. I'm worshiping Jesus. I'm in manifest, uh, living, personal relationship. I love it. I'm saved. But I want you to be if you're not. God wants you to be if you're not. You've not been forgotten. Don't let the devil lie to you and fill you with stuff to anger your heart. Don't go to hell angry. with no chance to come out. Deal with it now. Tell the devil he's lied to you long enough. Get out of it now. Surrender to God. Let the healing, the love, the grace, the power, the mercy, uh, the felt presence of God flow into your life as you turn and cry out, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in you. I receive you as Lord and Savior. I renounce Satan and all the sin and all the stupid things. I renounce the anger and the bitterness. I renounce all of this. And I turn my life over. Fill me with your presence. I accept you as Lord, Savior, and God into my life. Born of the Spirit of God. Embraced by God from the inside out now, my friend. Oh, because God loved you. Any reason why you'd wait any longer? Any reason why a Satanist listening right now uh, in anger at me or doing rituals or doing harm or making plots would uh, continue? Why don't you stop serving the side that is lost so many times? You ask your demons. They fear Yesu Christu. They fear Yahweh Adonai. Jesus has come for you. God has come for you. His power, His love, His might, only He can deliver you. And I know it's tough. When you've got demons in you and you're thinking about getting away, they slam you to the ground. May the Lord Jesus bind those spirits in the name of Jesus right now. May you be empowered by the Spirit of God to cry out to Jesus. May you be empowered by the Word of God. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come to Christ right now. Don't wait as he knocks and summons at the centrality of your heart. 
All the believers could be praying when you hear this because you know what? Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of downloads of this will go into up to 80 countries of the world. See, that's what we're all about in all the subjects we talk about. I don't care if we talk about the demons, Satan, hell, dark matter, Nephilim, trans. That doesn't make any difference. The beeline and the ultimate is that God loves you. It's all about God pursuing you. That's why I'm here. I don't want to waste my time in just talking about a black hole when there's a black hole in your heart and it can be healed and the Spirit of God can come in. Well, the future, biblical revelation, Revelation chapter 9, clearly brings revelation that mass numbers of humanity... Now, this is after all this dark underground. See, right now, right now, listen, all over the world right now, the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. Um, the regime, the serpent worshipers, they are lying low. They are supernaturally laced in powers that keep them hidden. But they're bulging at the seams. They're wanting to come to full presence in the world. And there is simply the finger of God, the restrainer. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Holds all of it back. Do you understand? The finger of God. Some say the Spirit of God. Some say an angel. Some say, listen, it just simply says God has a restrainer. God restrains the full force of the secret power of lawlessness. The full operating presence of Satan himself. The absolute apocalypse of anthroposonomos. The finger of God holds back this bulging, hellish, murderous, human-consuming, hell-serving presence back. The finger of God. I would, I would, uh, I would, uh, it would be my opinion that there would not be one fallen angel, not one demon in all of that side not involved at pushing. Oh, for the evolutionary development, they've been doing it. Millions are cooked by the hundreds of millions spiritually cooked right now. Blinded, embraced with alternative counterfeit things that have not led them to God, but preoccupied them and are now using them as dupes to further the greatest lie that will ever be unleashed to the world, the great hellish chaos, anarchy, black awakening, as they call it, will all the, it's going to occur. Out of the dust, those who caused it, the Antichrist and his regime that are in waiting, well, they will rise. See, globalism is not going to come because the UN voted on it or because the nations got together and voted on it. It will only come after the collapse, the chaotic, satanically plotted, the dark powers that in released, and the people that bring the well. You read. You could you listen. You want to you want to read prophetic revelation. Read the four horsemen. When you come to the red horse, look what happens. On a global scale, peace is taken instantly from the world. And this causes humanity. And the Greek word is people begin, or these people begin to butcher, butcher. The actual word is used in animal sacrifice. Millions will die in the great chaos. And whether you're a believer or not, one thing I've become aware of is that probably now billions feel this dark, ominous cloud coming. Oh, it's coming. Are you prepared? 
Do you know what's going to happen tonight if you die? And when the end of Christ comes, do we, do we understand? The, 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 Jesus said it in Matthew 24, just study it out. The greatest unleash of demonic presence in the, the greatest deception and the greatest destruction go hand in hand. To the degree of the deception comes the degree of the destruction. Global manifested dark powers, simply in Revelation 9 and verse 20, and in verse 21, 22, actually. You can go to 22 also. You know what 22 says? I'm, I'm sorry, 21? Verse 20 talks about the rest of humanity, which were not killed by the plagues and the other things, the wrath of God and things like that. They wouldn't turn away from the work of their hands or, nor stop worshiping, which would involve the ritual engagement, summoning of the demons. Look at the next verse, 21. They wouldn't stop repenting of their murderers, nor of their magic arts, sorceries, pharmakia. Now, I think that uh, maybe many of those authors of books television documentaries, researchers that have been going to the Mayan temples into South Africa, you know, to engage the ayahuasca, to drink the stuff, to get to the spirits. I'm going to tell you right now, unbelievable. These entities are so beyond you. When you open yourself up spiritually, oh, they will engage you. They will speak. They will influence you. You want to be a shaman? It's a sham. You want to watch the demons play games with your life? In the future, the Spirit of God says that millions will not stop from their murders. They will not stop the magic arts, sorceries, sorceries, pharmakia, the inseparable connection between the use of particular drugs and the summoning of demons in ritual format. They're not going to stop. That's the biblical picture of humanity's choices because the presence becomes so strong once you're so layered, once you're so into it, there literally is a moment of reprobation. There is a moment where God gives you over. Read about it. Romans chapter 1. Three times God says, You go so far in your blasphemy of God of Christ and if you go as far as blaspheming the Spirit of God, your goose is cooked for eternity. Future says, biblical future says, what God sees in the future and shows us a glimpse of is that millions will be in ritual format embracing the demons, summoning them, worshiping them, serving them. Point four, I just mentioned it, chapter 9, verse 21. It is revealed by their use of sorcery, magic arts. If you think that the development of ritual and magic arts have grown in the last 30 years, have you understood by the hundreds of millions of hits, satanic websites, websites that have rituals, death rituals, destruction rituals, every kind is out there. I gave the report earlier, do a little research on Italy alone. How many Satanists in Italy? <laughs> the last research in designated numbers where priests are being matched up with law enforcement to help stop this onslaught where they're crying for exorcists. I think, I think, the, I think the report was something like, you know, was it 8,000 8, different kinds of groups, but about 700,000? Members that they know of. So the un, you know, listen, Aleister Crowley's been dead for a long time, but more people have used his material, got into his rituals, and involved themselves. Even when we were out evangelizing in a bowling alley a few years ago, here is a junior high school kid with an listen with an Aleister Crowley deck of tarot cards that his mother was training him in. Magic arts, 
left-hand path. The deeper you go, the deeper their grip. The future sh- shows us with the Antichrist here, false prophet here, the manifestation in the air, in the cities, in the lives, so thick that by the millions people refuse to turn away from it. Read about it, Revelation 18. Babylon worldwide is way, way beyond Babylon of the days of Daniel. This uh, spiritual system uh, pictured by God as a prostitute, uh, a whorish spiritual prostitute that is seducing the world, the merchants, the kings, the military, the spiritual um, presence Well, Revelation 18 shows us in the very beginning that it's all about the manifestation. How did so many demons, how did so many millions upon millions of demonic entities manifest on this side? The number one way is human sacrifice. By the time you read Revelation 18, in which God's going to declare that Babylon's coming down, which is a good thing, it did become... um, a representation of the broadest, largest, most powerful manifestation of dark power in all of human history. It leads the world almost to annihilation, if not for the Son of God breaking in. Point number six. It's revealed in Revelation 16 when the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet kind of like what they do, triangulation, uh, the release, because they've got the powers within them, they release in ritualistic warfare manner spirits out of their mouths, targeting political, military leadership of the world, a global class planetary wave of... um, of, of demonic force. Even though the world's committed to the Antichrist by this time, taking the mark, worshiping the image, guess what occurs? He unleashes this world, this planetary wave. And that's what leads the kings of the earth, the peoples and the nations, to gather together, point number seven, in fulfillment of Psalm 2, Point number eight to Revelation 1919. The only reason for Armageddon, the world's largest military structure in human history, the most advanced, the most technologically, the most spiritually charged, the most uh, spiritually duped, but um, the pinnacle of of super soldiering is out on the field, Armageddon. And it occurs by those with the mark of the beast worshiping the breathed-into image, technology and spirit combined, of the beast. I've got the music coming on, my friends, tonight. This is Russ Dizdar, ShatterTheDarkness.net on the web. God bless you. Hey, remember us in your prayers. Remember us in your support. Good night.